Hi, am I on the air? Yep. Fuck. Thanks. I've been in the danger zone. <laughs> he got a bad My five stars. Yeah, Mongo. Huh? Yeah, my five. We got a do that. What is going down, everybody? Welcome back. It's time. It is time. The summer movie season is upon us, and we've kicked off in the biggest way possible with probably the biggest movie ever. When you talk about epics for this generation, this movie is going to be on that list. Because, of course, it is an Am I Still on the Air. And you know what we do when we do these Am I Still on the Airs. We break down one particular topic. And a lot of times we love to do these spoiler reviews and really dig in. And that's what we're here for tonight. I'm so excited to be talking about the biggest movie in the world. The eighth highest grossing movie of all time. And it's only been in theaters for seven days. It's incredible. And we're talking about Avengers Endgame, the culmination of a 22-film arc that took us from 2008's Iron Man all the way through to this Infinity War. Uh, Infinity War Part 1, which came out last year, and then culminated with, of course, Endgame. Like I said, biggest movie in the world, breaking all kinds of box office records. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But I'm happy to be here to, to talk about this film and get to talk about this film freely with full spoilers because if you listen to my latest episode of Am I on the Air, which is titled We're in the End Game Now, you should check out that episode if you haven't heard it yet. I do a non spoiler review, and it's very difficult to talk about this film and get into things because you don't want to spoil anything for anybody. But that's why we have a forum like this, so we can dive in deep and talk about everything from what we liked to what we didn't like, um, what's next, and all everything in between. So. As you know, when we do these episodes, I love to have some guests on so we can get different views and we can discuss it all through. So joining me once again, good friends of the show here, we got Peeps and we got Friggins back in the house. What up, y'all? I'm, I'm waiting for Friggins to say something. Uh, first, so. I was waiting. We never know who should go first. It's always like, I'm going to wait for you. and You're going to wait for me. What up, everybody? Don, thanks for having us, my man. Howdy, howdy. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, uh, I love having you guys on. You know, we knew right away. I mean, we talked about it before we even saw the movie. We were like, when's the <laughs> Am I Still in the Air? When are we going to do this? And, <laughs> right. uh, oh, yeah. and it's been good, man, because, you know, getting to do it, it's been out for, you know, cu- a couple days now. And I've seen it twice. I think Peeps has seen it three times already. Friggin's yep. over here, just only seen it once. And, know, but he's going to go imagine. again this weekend and get his second viewing in. I'm sure yep, I'll yep. probably see it at least two more times. Um, I, I'm, you know, ready to go again. Um, this movie, wow. I mean, I don't even know where to begin, to be honest. I mean, you know, when we did our 2018 countdown, all three of us uh, were on that episode, and we all said Avengers Infinity War was our number one movie of 2018, and uh, we were so excited. Of course, our most anticipated list we did as well, too, all going with Endgame, and then here we are. Endgame comes out. It it breaks the Thursday night preview record. It breaks the Friday record. It breaks the Saturday record. It breaks the Sunday record, and then it breaks the weekend record. Um, by almost a hundred million dollars, <laughs> which is just incredible. Yeah, Avengers: Infinity War was the previous record holder with two hundred and fifty-seven million dollars in its opening weekend, which was just phenomenal in its own right. And everybody started speculating: could it hit three? Could it hit three hundred million? But then again, you know, there was okay. Well, this movie's three hours long. I don't know if it can. Oh boy, did it! Because not only did it hit three, it hit three fifty-seven. So that means it for by exactly one hundred million dollars, it went <laughs> over what Infinity War did. And then you tack in the international numbers, and within its first five days out, this movie already made one point two billion dollars. It's the fastest movie ever to a billion. Um, it's got a good chance, man, to become the biggest movie of all time. <laughs> I mean, I mean it very, oh, for very sure. Much does. I mean, was yeah. anybody ever worried, honestly? I, mean, come on. <laughs> I don't I know. Mean, man. I thought it was gonna be big, but I didn't think it was gonna be this big. Like, I remember it when it, after Infinity War came out, I was like, "What movie could possibly top this? There's no way something like if Endgame does, it's barely gonna beat it, right. not exactly. by like a hundred million." <laughs> 
yeah. I don't know. I like I, I, the way I'm the way I kind of thought about it is like the way that Infinity War ended. It left everybody. You know, so many people are wondering like what like how are you going to end a movie like that? And <laughs> True. you know, till now they're hey. This is what happens afterwards. This is your full movie here, so I don't know. I, I, I it, it makes sense. I don't know. I sense. mean, we we knew it would do good. I just I didn't even think it was possible to make three hundred fifty seven million right? a weekend. <laughs> like that is just unheard of. I mean, God, until a couple of years ago, like you didn't even go over two hundred million in an opening weekend, and then so that's why Infinity Wars two fifty seven was so mind blowing because it was like it demolished the previous <laughs> record, and then it's like. And then a hundred million more. I mean, I, I I hear you, peeps. I mean, that definitely is what a big part of this. I think is that the people that not only went last year to see Infinity War, but all the people that actually didn't get to the theater to see Infinity War, the people that caught it on Netflix and True. at home, yeah. were like, "I gotta see what the fuck happens next yeah. in this movie." And that's I think what just drove this movie to just a whole new level. I mean, this thing, when tickets went on sale like a month ago, I mean, it crashed the damn internet, man. It took me like Literally. five hours. It took me like five hours all morning to try to get my damn ticket. And um, AMC's it, website was literally crashed yes. the entire day, <laughs> the pretty entire much. I mean, it day. was crazy. I got really lucky. One of my buddies, like, he did like this crazy mathematic equation. And he's like, it's going to come out on this day. And it's going to be at five, but they're going to release it like 10, 10 minutes early. He like texts me at like four fifty in the morning. He's like, dude, order your tickets right now. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> yeah, it was nuts, but it, it worked. I mean, we got, I ordered. So when I logged in, I was there, all the seats were available and I got dead center seats. And then next, like literally went back 10 minutes later. Cause I was going to add one more ticket. And the whole theater, except for the very front row, was already sold in 10 minutes. Yeah. It was crazy. I believe it, man. AMC's theater um, website crashed. Adam tickets crashed. Fandango was crashed. Like, literally everything was crashed. Like, the only way I was hearing people were getting tickets in that first couple hours was if you actually went and drove to the theater and right. bought your ticket, like, in person. Because things were just crashing left and right. I finally got on to Fandango, and then once I and once I finally got Fandango to work, it then put me into a fucking waiting lobby where I had to wait, like, another two hours for my number to come up in a queue. Jeez. And then when it did, because originally I was going to do the Thursday night thing like you guys did, and by the time it opened for the Thursday night IMAX, it literally, like you said, Fred, it was just the first row was left. And I was like, fuck that, I'm not doing front row on opening night. Hell <laughs> like, just, no, to, yeah. just to look at it that way at the IMAX screen. So we ended up shifting it and getting the Friday tickets. Um, but yeah, Man, I wish I was up. that guy that did like to sit in the front row, you know? <laughs> I know, you would never that. have a problem. You would never have issues. <laughs> Never, ever, ever problem. For somebody like me who likes to sit in the back row, <laughs> like, I'm just like, no! So, you know, was able to get the uh, Friday night tickets at 6 o'clock in the IMAX and, uh, and and go finally get to check this thing out, man. And thank God, once again, for reserved seating. I just want to thank yep. whoever thought up that master plan uh, <laughs> to save me, you know, f getting there four hours early and waiting in line just trying to get a seat. Uh, so stressful, too, because you're always like, someone's going to come and cut me exactly. off, and they never have, like, guards. <laughs> gotta gotta go to the bathroom. Ah, <laughs> yeah. So frustrating. Yeah, yeah, we've been there. We've all been there before yep. together and stuff, waiting in these lines, getting there. Okay, movie's at 7. Let's get there at 3.30, <laughs> get in yeah. line, you know, yep. and then so, and, you know, and Which now it's kind just of a fun experience, you know. It is kind of cool. I miss stuff. just chilling and talking and kind of you know coming up. Well, what do you think's gonna happen and all this stuff? I mean, but, talking uh, to all the people there too. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Sometimes I'd have to take my headphones though because like <laughs> if it was a later showing, the oh, people I know coming out are like, "Oh, did you see Darth Vader's Luke Skywalker's father?" And it's like, "Oh, motherfucker!" <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Can you can you believe Iron Man died? What? I know, right? <laughs> exactly. I hate that. So yeah, that's that's one of the benefits is I could show up like literally like ten minutes late and I just missed a couple trailers. Who cares? <laughs> Well, once again, hashtag spoilers. Uh, that's what this whole episode is about. Wow. Uh, where, you know, I told you already, this is what it is. This is where you come. We're going to break down this movie. Uh, and there's a lot to break down. There's a lot to dissect. There's probably questions that we're like, what do you think? Like, I mean, we're, we're going to get into it, man. And because this movie has not left my mind since I've seen it. Um, I just keep thinking about it. This was such an emotional roller coaster for me, man. Both times I saw it. 
I reacted the same way. I think I was actually more emotional the second time I saw it and like oh, things wow. were resonating. And I don't know if it was because my daughter was with me the second time. So like certain moments really kind of uh, clicked and yeah. different things like that to where I was like, oh, like, so like, I, I'm like, I, I, yeah, exactly. I'm <laughs> like, I'll get you all the cheeseburgers you want. <laughs> you know? Like fucking, uh, you know, her daddy likes cheeseburgers too. Yeah. Um, you know, like, yeah, dude, I'm cheering, I'm laughing, I'm smiling, and then I'm crying, and then I'm laughing, and then I'm crying, and, like, this movie, man, took me through a fucking wallop, um, and, and like I said, three hours long, this movie does not feel like three hours whatsoever, this thing flew by so fast that I, when it was in the final kind of culmination fight, I looked at my watch and was just like, is it really almost over already? Like, it does, I could not believe how fast time flew for this three hours. Um, but it, it just, just incredible. Like I said, man, it, for what Marvel did here, putting together a 22 film arc, the infinity saga, literally starting, like we said, 2008 Iron Man, and then you got Thor and then you got Captain America and you got incredible Hulk. And then we get our Avengers and then, you know, you get Ant-Man and you get Dr. Strange and you get black Panther and you know, all these other characters are introduced and everything. And then infinity war comes last year, right? Completely kicks us on our ass. We meet Thanos. He's the fucking coolest bad guy, like ever, like definitely a throwback to like Darth Vader days. Like you haven't seen a bad guy. That's this fucking awesome. And right. like, and then he, wins he wins the goddamn movie our heroes lose half the damn universe is fucking gone and dusted and you're just like where are we gonna go from here and the movie leaves you on that note and here we are a year later end game is here this three-hour epic masterpiece that starts off, boom, right in the beginning. Here's Hawkeye. Hey, I'm going to teach my daughter how to fucking do bow and arrow. And then, and, and it's my Gone. family. We're going to have a picnic. And then, dust. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and, I, knew that, I knew where that was going. You Dude, know. that, like, I was already worked up before that even happened because I was, kept thinking, like, they're going to show Hawkeye lose his family and he's going to yeah. go nuts. Like, yeah. so for before it even started, I was like, Oh, that's going to be hard. And then it starts off with that. And I was like, these motherfuckers are going to make me cry already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, in, in the crazy way that they shot it too, was like, he didn't see them dust. So it's like this, the weird moment where like he goes to talk to his daughter and he's just like, Where'd you go? And if you look closely, you could see the dust flying in the air too. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and like, and because some people missed it, and they're and like, but I was like, dude, no, it's there. And like, um, and then he's like, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? And then he turns around, and the whole family's gone. Which, if I'm gonna get nitpicky here, like, hey, that's my job. Thanos, <laughs> Thanos's whole fifty-fifty thing is very skewed because there's big chunks of motherfuckers that just keep vanishing, like. How is all of Hawkeye's Hawkeye's family gone? Like, not even one kid was left behind? Nope. Like, literally, like, and then think about, like, Ant-Man's situation, right? It's like, Hope and Hank and Janet, like, all gone. (laughs) Like, everybody's gone. But he got his daughter. He caught his daughter. Dude. No, but what he's saying, like. Yeah, like, like, all the main characters. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it, it, it's a 50-50 shot, It man. is not it's a 50-50 shot. It's a whole universe. Dude, There's all, a lot of people. All of Peter Parker's fucking grade got dusted. <laughs> like, <laughs> the whole class. Literally. <laughs> the whole class. Like, literally, yeah. like, they're all in the same... That motherfucking fl- thing flashed five years later. His whole fucking class is in the same damn grade, and they're going on summer vacation. No, I, when the I, next I movie did, comes out. <laughs> I did hear, though, that it is going to be a mix of, like, his class and kids that were, you know five years younger before the snap kind of thing. Uh, that would be interesting to hear them, like, reference Interact, it in yeah. some way. Right. Yeah. Like, wow, yeah, you guys well, still playing Fortnite? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Spider- Spider-Man uh, Far From Home uh, has been confirmed to actually be the last movie in this Phase 3. So it's kind of weird because it's like the Infinity Saga ended with Endgame, but phase three technically ends with Far From Home, which phase is kind of odd. <laughs> exactly. Because I already saw they're putting out a Blu-ray box set called The Infinity Saga, which is only 22 discs, which means Spider-Man Far From Home is not included. But it's the end of phase three, which the box set says phase one, two, three. So I don't know, <laughs> man. It's super confusing, but that's what Kevin Feige said. So I'll roll with it. Do we know um, what the box set's going to look like? Because I swear if it's, I, a, if it's an Infinity Gauntlet, I'm taking it. It, it, well, oh, it, sure. it, it, it's just a picture of a gauntlet. It's a box. Like it oh. doesn't. It's uh, not actually like in the shape of a gauntlet or anything. Right. Well, that's all you friggin'. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I already have. Because who buys movie. physical media anymore? <laughs> <laughs> have them all in Steelbook. Already ordered Captain Marvel. Actually, now I think about it, I need to order in game. <laughs> <laughs> I just posted in the chat actually a picture of the box set if you want to take a look at it. Oh, okay. Nice. But um, yeah. So so this so this movie here, you know, we we pretty much kick off. Like so, we like we talked about the Hawkeye thing, right? So his family gets dusted, and then the movie kind of begins. And we got Tony Stark, and we got Nebula up in space, and uh, they're kind of bonding. And and but he's dying, man. You saw it in the trailer. This is when he makes his little message, and he's talking to Pepper, and he's like, "Hey, you know, we we had some more fuel, but then it ran out, and we're out of food, we're out of oxygen, and basically, I'm gonna die tonight." And as he's kind of drifting off and dying. A bright light hits, and it's Captain Marvel, and she shows up, and she basically rescues them, carries the ship down to Earth like a G, drops it off, <laughs> you know, and uh, I gotta say, man, they did great making Tony look so damn fragile, dude, he was so skinny and just fucking worn out, like, in the beginning of that movie, you know? Not like, just that, but I think they did great, like, showing us the trailer, and I, was, I, I don't remember seeing that in the trailer, and I, I feel like I oh, watched yeah, the trailer sure. multiple times. <laughs> Maybe it was there, I don't know. <laughs> You didn't watch I went any back of them? and watched the trailer, <laughs> and I didn't see that in the trailer because um, I didn't. I actually made it the whole time without seeing a full trailer. Believe it or not, there was only two trailers, and none of them showed anything. They literally but, showed nothing. They did a great job. I went into that movie and I saw almost nothing. Like it was the best experience ever. But I went back and watched it afterwards, and. Um, yeah, I didn't notice Tony being as skinny as he was, no. and it reminded me of the tech that they used probably to to make Steve look skinny when he was uh, right. before he got the the serum. Oh, yeah, because yeah, he does. Yeah, he doesn't look that skinny in the trailer, but man, they they thinned him the hell out in the movie. Um, mm-hmm. And and I love man when he gets off the ship and Cap goes and grabs him, and the first thing I lost the kid. I lost the kid, you know. We all and, lost him. Yeah, yeah he's well. like we we all lost Tony, you know. And um, so they they basically are trying to figure out where the hell Thanos, right? And and Captain Marvel's like, shit, I'll go kill his ass right now. Let's go. And uh, and then so Rocket says, you know, oh, there was a signature. I think we know where he's at. Nebula confirms, yeah, he's on the farm. So let's go to the farm and let's fuck him up, right? Let's get all, let's get all the stones and we're just gonna snap and bring everybody back. All right, cool. Let's roll. They jump in the ship. They get to the damn planet. Uh, I love Captain Marvel shoots down to check it out first. She comes back. She's like, it's just him. He's just chilling. Like, like <laughs> let's go. So they all go down there, and they just grab his ass, and they're like, give us the stones. And he's like, I don't have them no more. And he's all fucked up. Like, his arm is fried. His head is fried. And um, and then Thor grab comes, bla- <laughs> Thor comes <laughs> blasting in and just chops his fucking hand off, right? So he can't do anything with the glove. And I'm like, damn. I'm like, okay. Hell yeah. You know? He so listened then, to the internet. <laughs> right? So then he's like, so they're like, give us the stones. And he's like, I use the stones to destroy the stones. And um, and they're like, what? No, oh, he's a goddamn liar. And, and then Nebula's like, one thing he's not is a liar. And then Thor just chops the motherfucker's head off, dude. I was like, oh, my God. That like, was yeah. so no, crazy, I was dude. Shocked. I love this line though. I am inevitable. Like that. That. Yeah. Oh God, he's such a G. Yeah. He just, <laughs> he just said, "No matter what you do, I am inevitable." And then Thor just wobla and just chops his fucking head off. And that shit had me like... confused because I was like, I know in a brief moment of a trailer that I saw before I could run away from it, like I saw him in the suit, and I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> Hold up. Wait. What are they gonna do to get him back in the suit? <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. You didn't. You didn't think that they were going to do some time travel shenanigans. I, I well, thought for sure. I mean, that was the whole. I, that was the whole hint in Ant Man the Wasp was like, oh, watch out for the time tunnels when you're inside the quantum realm. I was like, I just, I was like, there. That's the fucking answer right there. There's going to be time tunnels. I thought that realm. it probably would go that route. I just, I guess, it caught me off guard because it happened so fast and yeah. so early, and I was like, yeah. wait a second. So Dude, I, it I was know, just cool though. We're talking like the first ten minutes of the movie, dude. This right. is crazy. This is crazy. Th- yeah, Thanos' head is chopped off, and they're like, "What did you do?" And he's like, "I went for the head." <laughs> Just perfect yep. throwback to Infinity War, of course, when Thanos was like, "You should have gone for the head." Yeah. Um, so you know, so Thor walks off and is like, "Fuck this shit," and then everybody's like, "Oh no, we're screwed." And and literally, like, that's when the movie starts. And then it flash fa- uh, flash forwards five years later. Um, so we've lived in a world 
that has had this snap and nobody's coming back and five years have gone by. Um, it's just, it's insane, man. It's, it's hella insane. What a crazy open. Um, like <laughs> I remember when he got his head chopped off, my daughter looked at me like, so he's dead. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. And she's like, whoa, the huh? movie That's just started. Movie. Yeah. You know, I'm like, oh, that awesome. was a good movie, huh? Let's get up and go. Let's, let's, let's roll, you know? So, uh, a perfect kind of like they technically that's probably the real ending to infinity war. And then they're like, let's break it into two movies. So like, um, and I must say though, like that, that whole intro, that, that, that kind of threw me off, honestly. And like Friggins was saying, like you guys, like both of you are saying like, now what? You know, like that's the big bad, and the stones are gone. Now what? I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, on on my fifty fifth viewing of the movie, I don't know. I <laughs> I kind of I I kind of wish they would have kept that Thanos. He would have been the big bad in the end because yes, they fought Thanos at the end, and right. ah, they got him. But, but he's like, not the one that did it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. He is the one. He's nope. just. He's no, he wasn't. Younger. He's younger and stronger and more in his prime. But he didn't actually guy. do anything to them. Like, like when when he saw Scarlet Witch and she said, "Oh, you <laughs> took everything from me. I don't even know who you are, bitch. Get out of my face." <laughs> yeah. You will. Which was a good line, though. Yeah. But... It was. Yeah, that's <laughs> no, you're right. I mean, it kind of takes away a little bit of the personal grudge because they never got to make that Thanos pay for what he did. You know, I mean, I guess he did because he got his head chopped I mean, yeah. off, but, <laughs> but he didn't get to live to see it is the, is the payoff, you know, but I mean, it, it's a crazy opening, man. It's a ballsy opening. And then to jump five years really tripped me out because one thing the MCU's done really well is the timeline has always been kind of concurrent with our own timeline. You know, yeah. the movies really like Iron Man takes place in 2008 and, you know, Avengers takes place in 2012 when it came out, like everything like is in the right order. And now we're five years ahead. So we're in like 20. 2023 and we're like huh like how is this gonna pan out in the future with the mcu this is gonna be a little weird so spider-man takes place in 2022 or 2023 like this is gonna it's gonna be a little bit weird but uh hey i guess i guess we'll roll with it right so <laughs> maybe we'll um, get all these new movies with new characters and it'll say pre-snap yeah, exactly <laughs> well that's why i heard a rumor saying because we all know they're going to do a black widow movie and then somebody had s- speculated like maybe her movie takes place in that five-year window you know, after oh, yeah, the after the point. snap, but before you know everything else. So, so you know, actually, Don, I I, I did see that uh, Iron Man takes place in 2010. So even though, like, it's a little bit ahead of when it actually came out, just so that you know, I I guess they can kind of line them all up together. Like, when incredible. Did you see Hulk. it was 2010 because they referenced that Iron Man takes place in 2008 in uh, one of the movies. Yeah, I thought one of the other Iron Men was 2010. Yeah, mm-hmm. Iron Man like two, I think two, yeah, something yeah. like that. I, yeah, I, Iron Man two was two thousand ten. I I was on the internet one day and I, I looked them all up. <laughs> well, if Iron it's on Man the internet, it must be true. <laughs> Avengers is two thousand twelve, so yeah, I don't know. It kind of makes sense. I don't know what was he doing for the four years since that and Avengers. Hey, let's put the cause the the Avengers initiative. In about four in years. Four years. <laughs> like, there's a lot of paperwork. There's background stuff. <laughs> well, Tony was the only one they found at that point. Right. It took some a while to find Hulk. Coulson had to find the hammer. And then we had to fucking mm. thaw out Cap, and mm, we couldn't okay. find Banner. He was running around fucking Africa or some shit. Like, like you know, I mean, yeah, it takes time, sick man. People or something. Yeah. yeah, it takes time. <laughs> yeah, I get you. You know. So, uh, so, so basically, like I said, we fast forward five years later. The world is trying to move on. And, and kind of get going again. And uh, this is where Ant-Man comes into play. Like, we go and we see uh, Luis's van, and then a little rat runs across the console and turns it on, and, and Ant-Man's here. And then Ant-Man's freaking out, wondering what the hell's happening. And uh, he, he finds his daughter, who is now five years older, and he doesn't have his little little sweet Cassie anymore. But, man, when, when, he, when he found her and she was like, Dad? And I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> that was no. one of the first moments right there. She you looks know. like she's like twenty years older though. I, I know, know, dude. It was a it was a big jump for five years, man, yeah. because he had a little little girl and like now she's like, Yeah, she's like seventeen. <laughs> I'm exactly. like, what the hell just happened? I mean I could maybe I'm I'm guessing she was ten in Ant Man too, and now be now she's fifteen. Okay, yeah. I, I think that's what they're trying to do, but she looked older than fifteen. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> But um, but it's cool. She didn't get snapped, so he gets that connection. He goes to the Avengers facility, um, finds um, 
Cap and uh, Black Widow, and he's like, it's me, it's Ant-Man, you know, and then, once again, guys, that's from the trailer, the first trailer that came out. Yeah. But, uh, but see, this is where trailer, I want to spin off here to trailer manipulation, because when the trailer came out, and they actually had the little tag at the end with Ant-Man being like, hey, it's me, remember me from Germany, like, Ant-Man, I know it's <laughs> me, and then Cap's like, is this, is this, like, pre-recorded, and she's like, no, it's live at the gate right now, like, Black Widow has her short blonde hair, in the trailer, like ah, Infinity War, oh, but in shit. the movie she has that long red hair with the with the blonde tips, you know. So they changed a lot of different scenes slightly like that, so you didn't know things were jumping around. There were scenes in the trailer that had other characters in it, like like Thor. He is a, virtually erased from every damn scene <laughs> that he that is in the trailers, you know, to not give away what we'll talk about here why. in a minute. But you know, why. but yeah. things like that, like they did really well, like taking that out, like they insert a shot i think of thor at one point where he's just standing there with the electricity going around him but he looks it looks like something out of ragnarok and like and um or infinity war maybe but um but they did that and then even the scene um there's a quick scene with tony and cap right before they go back to 1970 to uh the army facility uh tony says to him like do you trust me and cap's like i do um, Cap in that scene is obviously wearing his Avengers suit from the first Avengers movie, mm. but in the trailer they CG'd on like his new suit, like his normal Cap Cap suit. Yeah, so once cool. again, you didn't have an idea that yeah that that they were back in that time. You know, you never see Hulk in any of the marketing. Like they definitely they CG'd him out. So the, so there was a lot of really cool manipulation they actually did. If you go back now, it's kind of it'd be kind of cool to go back and watch it all now, knowing what you know. And and it's really cool to see how they try to throw people off with the uh, marketing on that. So pretty cool. That's how all trailers should be, in my opinion. But... <laughs> <laughs> but, no, but, but then you run the risk. Like, it works for this movie, but, like, I wouldn't want to get to a point where people just start putting in fake shit in their trailer. And then I get to the movie, and I'm like, where the fuck was all the cool shit I saw in the trailer? And then it's just no, fake, fake marketing. I got burned with uh, Star Wars Rogue One once with that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's a good point. That's yeah, good point. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes no, that's the cool good point, shit is not in the movie. You know, so, uh, so yeah, so Ant-Man comes in and, and so he's talking to them and he's like, he, he's freaking out and he's like, you know, I've been in the quantum realm. Does anybody know about quantum and all this stuff? And then, so he's like, you know, they're like, no, you know, he's like, that's the thing. You know, I haven't been gone five years in the quantum realm. Time is different. I was only gone five hours. So they start kind of setting up the, uh, the idea of time travel and Hey, if we do this, we can create a time heist and we can go back in time, and <laughs> collect the stones first before Thanos ever gets them. And then we could do our own snap, you know? So they're like, okay, that's kind of a de- decent idea. Who's smart enough to come up with something like this. And then they go to fucking find Tony. Um, now real quick, I want to see if any of you caught this, right? So before Ant-Man shows up, there's a scene with Black Widow and she's kind of like, almost like it's like she's leading whatever superhero group we have at this point. And sure. she's talking to holograms of War Machine, Captain Marvel, Rocket, and Nebula. And, um, uh, Okoye also from, from Wakanda. And, uh, Okoye actually talks about a... Um, fucking, uh, like a typhoon or some shit, like in the waters by Wakanda, which is a total fucking nod to Namor. Namor, yeah. You know, so she starts talking about this weird fucking thing that's happening in the oceans by Wakanda, and they gotta go check it out. And I'm like, oh shit, like they're setting up something right there, (laughs) which is badass. Um, so... Uh, that that's pretty. Dope. That's pretty damn cool. We see Captain. I didn't Marvel even now. think about that. Yeah. No. Oh, see, dude, check it, check it. You saw it three times. How did you not catch that? No, I saw <laughs> it. I just didn't think Namor. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, so like I was the thinking comics... like her. It's it's in the ocean. We handle well, it by not handling it. <laughs> with the comics, the, the Namor and Wakanda, so Atlantis and Wakanda, kind of like have this rivalry. They battled each other. And, like, one destroyed the other at one point, and the other destroys the other, and, and retaliation, and, you know, so there's this, like, little bit of rivalry. So that's a really co- cool point to, to mention. Yeah, yeah, so I'm hoping that maybe that's the direction we take for Black Panther 2. That would be kind of unique. Um, I know that uh, Namor, the rights to Namor is kind of like a Hulk situation where they don't own the rights to do a solo movie, but they have, like, an agreement to put him in other stuff. So that's why that's why Hulk can be in like Avengers movies and Ragnarok and stuff, but they just can't do a solo movie without having to use a different studio. And Namor is in the same contractual like situation. So if they do something like putting them in Black Panther two, they can get around that shit. Sweet. They should like that title really it cool. like totally not a Hulk movie, 
and <laughs> have a, a couple other people in there, but it's basically a Hulk movie. Yeah, exactly. The <laughs> totally saying. not Hulk. <laughs> yeah, the totally not Hulk movie. Yeah. And Friends. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And Friends. <laughs> and friends. <laughs> Hulk out. Um, now, I, I will say though, Don. Like while we're on the, the you know the the the, cut, the topic with the whole time, um, you know, nitpicky peeps here. Um, <laughs> I, I was I was a bit disappointed that they're able to to accomplish this time heist and time travel with no influence from the time stone. I was kind of hoping from the get go that they would use yes the technology like science and uh, you know mystical magic to be able to you know traverse through time. But now they can literally do it whenever they want, as long as they have pin particles and a really cool, yeah, you know, television, you know, television. platform. Yeah, I don't know. It but just, that's it kind just... of the beauty of it, though. It's like the time stone isn't. You know, everyone thought that that was the only way, but like right. they found a, a way around it through a different means that no one would have ever come yeah. up with. You know, yeah, it's so like... now, now they're basically time cops, and they can do it anytime they want, whenever they want, at any time. The yeah. only difference is that they know that if they mess with time, it's going to be catastrophic because but they got that on, explanation. No, that was only if they remove like if they remove a uh, an infinity stone from that reality, it would be catastrophic. But th- they gave Loki an infinity stone, and that's okay. <laughs> right, because they went further back in time and put it back in 1970s. So. Nope, nope. Loki still, Loki still stole it. Uh, he, like, oh, I know. Out. I agree. We'll, we'll talk about that. We'll get there. We'll get there. I definitely yeah. have speculations on Loki. But um, I, I just, I don't know, the whole time thing. I agree that... with you, though, because it's a clutch now that they do have in their back pocket. So, you know, as much as, you know, um, once again, we're gonna, if we fast forward and, you know, we just said, Iron, you know, Iron Man dies at the end, right? But having a time machine, what stops anybody from going back and being like, from Tony, we need your help. Tony, you know, yeah, right. grabbing Tony from 2012, you know, and exactly. just being like, you die in the future, but we need you. Nobody's as cool as you, like, fucking, you know, so. Um, I, and I, I feel the liked... same way about Cap, to be honest. Like, what, 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 what would stop anybody? anybody from going back to 1940 and just being like cap i need you <laughs> like we got to come with us to the future I, I guess i would have liked to see maybe that technology dies with tony of course he was the one that figured it out right. and thanos destroyed the one ship and now tony yeah. died so like nobody can now do it anymore but no they can still do it nope <laughs> exactly exactly so we'll see how if they abuse the uh, power or not, <laughs> uh, going, going i have forward. a feeling they'll just toss it off to the side they, like, they, eh. they probably will for, no, for there's going to be a there's gonna Event, be a don't use it eventually. There's going to be a janitor, and his name is Kang, and then he's going to get a whole... Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's it's a nod for, for comic book fans out there. Um, so like I said, so Black Widow's talking to the, to the virtual reality fucking versions, and she, they, we hear the little name or drop. Um, we see now, because since we're in the future, Captain Marvel's got her short hair from the comic books now, so a little, little do-up, uh, you know, so uh, pretty cool there. But they're like, you know, are you going to be around? And she's like, nah, man, there's a million other planets out here that are do- dealing with the same problems you guys are, so I'm going to be busy with that shit. So, you know, kind of <laughs> smart to keep her busy. She's so fucking powerful that you kind of got to <laughs> Get her the fuck out there. Yeah, so, so Only you gotta... when she's flying. <laughs> she took a headbutt without yeah, moving. She's, so, she come on can now. do it on her feet, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> dude, she went toe to toe with Thanos fucking later on. Yeah, and then like got said, tossed. They... She got tossed because he took the power stone out and bitched her in the face. No, no, no. That was pre-power stone. Again, no, three it times, wasn't. Guys. No, no he it took, wasn't. He took it out of the power stone and then smacked her. All right, all right. But I, she got tossed, but yeah, she okay. got tossed with the power stone. Okay, all right. that's what that's what it took. But anyway, like I like because they kind of had to do the same thing with Vision over those last couple movies, you know, because he was so powerful. So they're like, oh, we're not going to use you very much. We'll just bring you in when we need it. Um, Vision, who though does not come back in this film, so that surprised uh, me. I was expecting the like white and gray version. Yes, to come back. for sure, for sure. Because well. Maybe they'll bring him back down the road. We know that that, that pretty much uh, Shuri like did something and uploaded his consciousness or whatever in Wakanda before the Infinity War fight. So I feel like they'll be able to download his stuff to a new robot body that'll probably be made out of vibranium or something. They got to do something. We have that Disney Plus show coming out with her and, with, and Scarlet Witch and him. So um, they got to do something there. So we'll, we'll see. But in this movie, Vision does not return. Um, so we go to see Tony Stark 
he's living out in the woods now. He's married to Pepper, and he's got a kid. He's got a daughter. She's all super cute, and and he's like, I'm not doing this shit. So the <laughs> Avengers come. They're like, help us. And he's like, nope. He's like, I got too much to lose at this point. I got a daughter. I'm married. I'm cool. I lucked out. So no, I'm not doing it. You know, and so. Um, so they leave, and then of course, because it's Tony, he starts messing with shit, and pretty much what it seems like in the movie is on his first fucking try, figures out time travel <laughs> with this little hologram computer. I love it that it's his first try, though. It's like, yeah, Come it's on. all simulation complete, successful, and he's like, "Fuck!" <laughs> like, really? You know? Mm, yeah, I, I agree, but I'm just in my head. I'm just going to tell myself, "No way, no." He, <laughs> he tried at least three times, right? It, that was his fourth time. We just didn't so. see the other times exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because if in Iron Man one look how many times it took him to get shit right (laughs) i didn't catch it though but she said shit like three times yeah well he says shit then she says shit that he's like he's he's like you can't say that and she's like well what are you doing he's like i'm trying to solve some shit and that's so funny funny. great scene which is now coined the phrase in my household of love you 3000 uh which is the the greatest thing ever uh i've already adopted that and use it every night putting my daughter to bed now uh it's all over the internet too i mean oh dude it's everywhere my wife sent me a a, a shirt that yesterday that said i love you 3000 like i like to order and it's like the it says it made out of like arc reactors (laughs) like it's pretty oh that's dope yeah like so it's just it's such a cute thing man um so yeah so i started using that with my daughter the other night and then she's i say it she says it back it's a cute cute moment that he says that he has with her, and I just love the dialogue with. Her. He's like, "Oh, three thousand, that's awesome!" And then he goes to Pepper, wow. and like, "She loves me three thousand. You're in the somewhere in the six to seven hundred range." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not that it's competition. So, um, so yeah. So basically, he's torn. He's like, "I did it. I solved it. I can do time travel. What do you want me to do? Should I just put a cork in it? You know, I'll stop. I'll stop right now." And she's like, "You can't." She goes, "We got lucky, but a lot of people didn't." And we need, you need to do what you got to do and help these people. So he's like, okay. And so, uh, you know, since he turned down the Avengers, though, they go to find the next smartest person, which is Banner, who is now basically Professor Hulk, right? So he's like, hey, what's up, guys? Like, he's all talking, and, and which was a very pleasant surprise. I had a feeling they were going to go that route at some point in the movie, but I didn't expect it to be the first time we see him. He's, like, chilling, like, at a diner, eating, like, 500 pancakes and a fucking bunch of eggs, and he's just like, what's up? <laughs> like, yeah. like, he's like, I had Hulk the last out. five years. Yeah, Hulk out. Like, I love that. Man. Can we take a picture? Of course you can. You want a picture yeah. of me? I'm Ant-Man. <laughs> so, like he's shaking his head no no <laughs> oh, i like on, how he says like he picture. literally said no yeah <laughs> <laughs> just take yeah. the goddamn phone yeah i, I <laughs> thought though again I, I thought it was fine but it was kind of funny like hey how'd you do it you know one day i thought let's put the brain and brawn together <laughs> and i did it okay it's simple uh, it's fine. whatever yeah. let's, let's move I on all i had to it. do is <laughs> combine them yeah it's that simple it's like so, adding sugar so, and, 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 you know, I wonder if you feel the same way, peeps, because I know you're a massive Hulk fan. I'm going to tell you, if I had to be really nitpicky and I had to pick out one of my biggest gripes with this movie, it's going to be the Hulk situation. Now, on one hand, I love what they did. I think the smart Hulk, I thought he was funny as hell. I enjoyed every scene he was in, right? Yeah. Here's my problem. In Infinity War... He comes out one time, he gets his ass kicked by Thanos, and then he's afraid to come out the rest of the movie. Mm -hmm. The second we meet him in fucking Endgame, he's just like Professor Hulk, but he's not really Hulky, right? He's just smart. And then even in that massive fucking battle at the end of the movie, he never touches Thanos. He never even fights him, comes close to him, nothing. They have no moment, and I wanted a fucking moment where he went face-to-face with him, and they just got to beat each other's ass down, you know? Like, I wanted him to get some kind of revenge for the way Infinity War went down, you know, because Banner would have... I don't know, I feel like he, if he really hulked out in that body with having the brain and the brawn, like, he could have really done some damage... And they didn't, like, he's pretty much MIA that entire fucking final fight that is incredible. So it's just like, so that kind of bummed me out and that bugged me. So I wanted to throw that to you peeps and see if you kind of felt the same way. Did you think about that? Like, what was your take on kind of the way Hulk was handled? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's funny. Literally, friggins knowing the same thing you know asked me the same question the the, the night that we left the the theater. And and yeah, I, I... 
have been disappointed on the way that they've handled Hulk since Avengers. Um, and I, I, though he has been great, I just have wanted a little bit more. And finally, when I get a talking Hulk, he's like a, a baby. So whatever, fine. The, you know, Thor Ragnarok, it is what it is. And, you know, then we we're kind of get to where we're at now. And like you said, man, I'm like, OK, Professor Hulk, he got the brain and the bronze. Great. He's going to be at least, you know, holding like some kind of super cool science gun while he's like whooping people's asses or something. Or I, I, that would have been sweet. Or, or maybe adding the um, the the Hulkbuster technology along with them. I, I don't know something, but it, it didn't happen. I was you know definitely disappointed. Though I do love I love the you know 2012 Hulk. Fucking stairs. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> More stairs. Stairs. <laughs> but that's that's kind of the thing. Like it was awesome. It was hilarious. But they took him and turned him into the kind of comedy factor of. Um, of the whole movie, which was great. It, it, that's not a complaint. But I wanted to also have Hulk smash. I wanted Hulk to be the badass, like, kick your ass and smash yes. your face factor, too. Like, I, I wanted to see, like, World Breaker Hulk. And again, as as most of us know, Hulk's uh, power is generated by his rage, though I don't know how you can get more mad at a situation and get more powerful, but whatever. <laughs> um, but... I would have loved to see Hulk just go like completely ballistic with something that happened, a, a death of somebody. And then like his eyes just kind of, oh, yeah, there I go with my eyes, but <laughs> they just always the to, damn like, eyes. fire or something. And he just like grabs Thanos's leg and flips him around like Loki style. <laughs> I don't know. Just such a missed opportunity that he never gets to throw any blows at Thanos. Like, I'm Nothing. just like, really? How? No blows. He doesn't throw he, blows at anybody. No, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, he pops up, like, in the, like, when they're kind of scaling through all the people, you know, and then he's there, and then you don't really see him do anything. Yeah. Which Even is him just, versus um, the other big dude, the, yeah. the Black Dwarf guy, which like, they changed his name, apparently. It's crazy but. to me because they made such a big deal to have the original three go at Thanos, right? You right. You had Cap, you had Thor, you had Iron Man. Why the fuck was Hulk not a part of that? He's part of the original fucking group. He so had a it's baby like... arm. <laughs> so. I don't care about his little burn arm. Like, he could have right. done something. He should have still been there for that fight. And, like, I'm not saying he needed to win it, but he should have been able to throw a couple punches. So, totally. uh, I just felt like it. they set it up so perfect in Infinity War. Like, no, I don't want to come out. Like, you know, and then it was like, when time was dire and in need in this movie, it was the perfect time for him to be like, and just fucking hulk out and just yeah. fucking go nuts. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. So that's why I'm kind of torn. So, I mean, just a little disappointed in there. I feel it's a lost opportunity, but I love what they did with the character. That diner scene is great. Uh, you know, taking the pictures with the kids and he's got his fist up like a boxer pose, you know, like, yeah. you know, and he hulk out. Um, you know. <laughs> Say green. Say green. <laughs> green. <laughs> you know, and just, and just everything, man. Like, so they make their own like time travel machine and then that's when Ant-Man becomes fucking old and he's a baby, then he's a teenager and I love that. Uh, somebody peed my pants. I don't know if it was old me or baby me or just me me. Or just me, me. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Rudd is so great in this fucking movie. I am so glad that they gave Ant-Man like a really cool fucking like main event arc in this movie. Yeah. So it's very, very cool. Um, you know, so... They're trying to figure out the time travel. It's not really working. And then Iron Man shows up and he's like, I figured it out. He's already got little gauntlets like kind of made to be like, here, put this on. This is going to help us fucking put in the coordinates and all this stuff. Uh, Hawkeye tested out. He goes, he, um, whoa, Natasha goes and finds him. Of course, he's Ronin at this point. He's fucking chopping up Yakuza and shit. All Heck crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it was he's pretty cool, Punisher man. on those motherfuckers. Yeah, dude, it was going crazy. It was awesome. And then he's like, you shouldn't be here. And Natasha's like, you know, hey, I think we found a way. And he's like, don't. Don't give me hope. I don't want to hear it. And she's like, no, this is, this is what we got to do. So he comes home. He tests it out. He goes back to the farm. His family's there. And he's like, it worked. Let's do this. So then at this point, we, oh, no. They, so I'm skipping over Thor, man. So we go to fucking recruit oh, Thor, boy. right? We got to go to New Asgard, right? So basically that little little town that Thor and Loki go visit his dad in, in uh, Ragnarok, you know, that they, they're just kind of off in the cliffs. And 
and so it's new Asgard there. We run into Valkyrie, um, and I gotta say, you know, what a cool! I want a poster of Hulk sitting in the back of a pickup truck too, because that shit was so fucking cool. Yeah, that was funny. Just, yeah, the trucks like grinding on the ground. Yeah, dude, as he's, like, he's like holding his knees, just chilling in the back of the fucking pickup <laughs> truck. I was like, dude, what a visual, dude. Which kind of confused me because I was like, I thought y'all had a spaceship. Yeah, exactly. So they yeah. like, like he had to go trek down like like hitchhiking style down the fucking New Asgard. <laughs> and like, who would pick up the Hulk? I don't know. Nobody Maybe there's like international air travel like <laughs> laws, Pete. I mean, they're not trying the, to start a war. There wasn't the at the end of the movie. Go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> they took the Quinjet to Tokyo to get fucking Hawkeye. Oh, that's where it was. They were getting Hawkeye. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> they only got one. Yeah. They got more than one. No, they, they yeah. took Peter. Half of them disappeared. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and don't forget, Hulk was also with Rocket. So, <laughs> so uh, by so the way, I just want to point out that Rocket's new outfit is the best. Like I think that's it's the, the best. best looking Rocket so far. Like it's so close to the original like comic book style, and with his like little goggles and his two side pistols, <laughs> like scarf. oh, it's freaking yeah. amazing. He was cool. I, I love to think of Rocket in the beginning of the movie after Tony gets rescued and, and they're talking and then Rocket says something and Tony goes, I really thought you were a Build-A-Bear up until this point. <laughs> <laughs> Did he say like I am or something? Yeah, like, he I goes maybe I am. <laughs> yeah, he goes maybe yeah. I am. But I just I love Tony Stark's reaction because he kind of jumps and he's like, I totally thought you were a build a bear up until the second, <laughs> <laughs> which is so awesome because he's just sitting there on the bench. <laughs> I, I, I love too like moments like when they start talking about impossible things that people yeah. would normally question and like Black Widow said. Um, like I, I'm giving orders to a raccoon. Like uh, I, I've had Stranger Days. Right, kind of right. Thing. Yeah. yeah. She goes. I get emails from a raccoon. I don't. I don't yeah. question anything these days. You know. Yeah. But I love you. But then even like that one scene with Rocket, and he's like. Paul Rudd says something, and then he's like, "Oh, you want to go to space, puppy? Let's go to space. Is that cool? You want to do that?" He's all petting his head and shit. I was like, "What the fuck, dude? Rocket was awesome in this movie, dude. Like, just all the great. Way. Just little things. Even when yeah. Nebula saw him, and he was like, "Hi." He's like, uh, "Rhodey just care with us, an idiot in the landing way or in the, in the landing zone." You want to go to space, little puppy? Yeah. <laughs> Both gave him two little tacos. That was so nice. Yeah, that was really nice. Oh, Those yeah. Tacos got all fucking thrown away. <laughs> Spaceship, that's really cool. Uh, so they go to New Asgard. They bump into Valkyrie, which was great to see Valkyrie back. And they're like, yeah. uh, and they're like, we're here to see Thor. And she's like, he's not going to see you, man. We barely see him. He comes down like once a month, and it's just to get beer. <laughs> so then they're like, what? So they go to his house, which at this moment I was so fucking happy to see Me Korg too. and Meek. <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> he's like, hello. <laughs> Feel free to jump into the Wi-Fi. <laughs> you know, like, and just, and I was like. He didn't. He didn't get dusted. It was awesome, man. Because I we just didn't know what happened to Korg, and uh, so he's there. And then Thor fucking shows up, and he's got his long hair again. He's got a big ass beard. And he's also got a big ass belly too. <laughs> he just got <laughs> Thor. Like Thor let cream. himself go. Yeah, Rocket goes. You look like melted ice cream, which is my daughter's favorite part of the whole fucking movie. <laughs> That's <laughs> <So>. awesome. <laughs> what was your favorite part when Rocket told Thor he looked like melted ice cream? Uh, so... Dude, there's gonna be so much cosplay of that version of Thor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you haven't seen the movie and you're listening to the spoiler edition for whatever reason, just look up Jeff Bridges in fucking uh, The Big Lebowski. <laughs> yes, and that's Lebowski. what fucking Thor looks like this whole movie. He's got glasses on, he looks like the fucking dude. Um, Iron Man and... even called him that, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah so he, get out, he said, get out of the way, Lebowski, when he was trying to walk to the time machine. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so Thor, basically, he's just super depressed. He gave up after chopping Chopping off Thor's head, uh, chopping off Thanos' head, he was just like, fuck it. He went away and he just got depressed and he let himself go and he just, nothing mattered. He just drank and just chilled in his house. They're playing fucking Fortnite and shit. I love he got on the, this is Thor, the god of thunder. <laughs> you stop. I'm gonna fucking go ahead come. and cry. Shove your head up your Talking ass. Talking shit to like a 12 year old. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's great. So they're like, you gotta come, man, you know, and then Hulk's like, we were gonna stop him, we we're gonna stop Thanos, and he's like, don't you say that fucking name! And he gets all mad, and then Korg's like, yeah, man, we don't name. say that name here, boy. <laughs> you know? Um, is you know, it me, or it, it, it seemed like Korg was dressing exactly like the, you know, Taika. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was like a Hawaiian, the Hawaiian shirt. shirt. Yeah, it looks yeah. just like him. Yeah, so great stuff there. So they're like, no, you got to come, man. We need you, right? We're putting the team back together. And he's like, nah, you know, I've, I'm done. I don't really live that life. 
he's popping beers on fucking Stormbreaker and shit. You know? <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and they're like, no, we need you, dude. We need you. Come on. And then Rocket's like, we got beer on the ship. So then that's how they get him. <laughs> and then, uh, so now we're back, man. We're getting ready to jump through time. We decide to break up into teams, right? So they're, they're trying to figure out about the stones. They're trying to figure out what does what, you know, where are they at and, and how are we going to figure out how to get them all. And, uh, I love, and like we talked about little character moments, like when Thor's trying to, they're, they, they're like, Thor, you're up, talk about the fucking uh, redstone, right? And he's like, oh, the ether, right? And he starts it's talking, he's really like, a stone. he's not really a stone, it's like sludge, gooey it's like yeah. sludge, yeah, you know, and he's like, I don't know why somebody just called it a stone, you know, and yeah. then he, you know, and he's like, it was the dark elves are so scary, <laughs> right, you know, and he's like, wow. and then there was Jane, we used to date. You know, and he gets all sad and shit. But it's funny because as he's explaining, everybody's looking like, oh, my God, this motherfucker. And then they show Paul Rudd as Ant-Man, and he's just grinning ear to ear like, uh-huh, <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. Like, just eating it up, dude. Like, cause he's like, he wasn't involved in any of this shit. So he plays it off so great. Like, he's so happy to be there and be a part of this team. Yeah. And he's just like, hell yeah, dude, this story is great. Yeah. You know? And yeah. even that moment, like, right before they call Thor, is like, okay, Thor, you're up. Thor? I think he's yeah. dead. I think he's dead. dead. Yeah. Is he sleeping? I think he's dead. <laughs> he's all just chilling in the corner with the glasses. God, so good. He was so good, dude. Chris Hemsworth, MVP. Fuck out of this movie. Just so so awesome. But and I and here's say... where I give the director's fucking props, dude. They left him that fucking way the whole movie, dude. I kept waiting for him to fucking just strike some lightning in the sky and he was going to be good old Thor again. And yeah. they were like, nope. Even when he fucking, like, Thor's up at the end, he's still big with just the suit over it. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. fucking, and I'm like, <laughs> hells yeah. They totally left him that way to fucking rock it. The only thing that thing did was braid his beard. <laughs> when he <electricity> <laughs> <down>. <laughs> and yeah. on top of that, like, not only did they leave him through the whole thing, but they left it to where, like, wherever he's going, he's still like that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I was like, when he's on the ship with the Guardians, I was like, this is still Big Thor. Like, they didn't, <laughs> they didn't try to, like, fix it at the end or something. Like, yeah. nope, he's still going to be like that. It, it's awesome, man. I just give them mad props that they, they straight up just left him that way. They're like, this is part of his story. This is part of his arc, man. He just he gave up and he fucking is depressed and he's lost his fucking home. He's lost his mom and dad. He's lost his brother. He's lost everything he's ever fucking known. And uh, he lost his hammer. <laughs> he just everything's gone. So he's just he's sad, man. You know, and he blames himself. You know, he's the one course, that blames yeah. himself for fucking the snap even happening. So you you can understand where he's coming from and it's great. They just, they killed it with that. I just never expected it in a million years. And, and, and I honestly thought it was going to be like a running gag for like 10 minutes and they were going to switch it. And they never did. <laughs> and I was like, damn, good on them. So, so that I was will awesome. say, he didn't lose his abs though. There were still abs on that yeah. belly. I'm telling you, watch there it was, again dude. and pay attention. I saw a six pack on that belly. Oh, dude. And when, <laughs> and when, uh, when Banner says Thanos and he grabs him and goes, don't ever say that name, his arm is fucking massive in that scene. Like, you oh, can yeah. straight up see the biggest bicep on his fucking arm. And it's just yeah, like. It kind of know. reminds me of like E Honda. I swear E Honda also had like abs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, it's huge. Yeah. And yeah. ripped. So but funny. I will say this. I also think that that is the coolest look Thor's had. <laughs> like, with like the way his hair was, it looked really cool. And that braid in, uh, on his beard was actually really badass. Like, he looks scary. Like, I would not want to mess with Thor in general. But, like, that Thor, <laughs> man, he, he, just, he looked like a biker Thor or something. Like, he's going to yeah. fuck you yeah. up. It, it was just the sweatpants and the hoodie that, that kind of threw it off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, I always dress like this. <laughs> um, so yeah, so so they they talk about the stones. They realize that at one point three stones were in New York at the same time, right? So they're mm-hmm. like, okay, cool, we could break into three groups. One group goes and gets the three stones in New York. One goes to get the Soul Stone, and the other one goes to get the fucking Power Stone from Guardians One. So they so they break off into these three groups. So you got um, Hulk. Iron Man, Captain America, and Ant Man, they go to New York. You have uh, Black Widow and um, and Hawkeye that go to get the Soul Stone, and then War Machine and uh, Nebula go to get the um, Power Stone. So they all branch off, they go into their little time tunnels, and that's when we flash to the events of the first Avengers movie. And um, 
what a cool, cool thing, man. We jump right into the scene of the big circle, you know, motion of all the heroes coming together. And, and you got that moment, right? Hulk, rah, and everybody just spinning around. And then it shoots over and you see them pop up and they're like, okay, let's go get these stones. Everybody <laughs> knows what they need to do. And it's they tell Hulk. Posing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, never mind. <laughs> Yeah, they tell the Hulk, you know, like, because then, then Hulk comes by and he smashes a Chitauri with a fucking car and then jumps on top of the car and smashes the guy <laughs> some more. And he's all super crazy Hulk, right? So they're like, hey, and you might need to go smash some stuff too to the smart, <laughs> smart Hulk. And he's like, fine, but it's super gratuitous. And he rips yeah. his shirt off and then he's like, eh, like in the cars and he throws the <laughs> motorcycle. <"Rawr." laughs> it's so good, dude. He played it so, so well. Um, so uh, t- they go in, they're trying to get the Tesseract back, right? So this is where cool, like all the little cameos that they got too, man. Robert Redford comes back from fucking Winter Soldier. I was like, oh my God, I never thought I'd see this dude in another movie again. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. So he pops up, he's like, give me the Tesseract. And they're like, no, we can't. And the Ant-Man goes into his arc reactor and gives him like a fake heart attack. Um, mm-hmm. And then Cap Is that goes- Spy Spray? <laughs> Yeah. And All then, right. And then Cap goes to get Loki's spear, and then we, and then the elevator opens, and we're basically get almost a recreation of the Winter Soldier fight, which is awesome. It literally had mm-hmm. all the same people mm-hmm. in the same exact setup, and I'm like, oh my god, they're gonna do the Winter Soldier fight in the original Avengers movie timeline, and yeah. then and then the smartest thing they could have ever do is have him be like, Hell Hydra. <laughs> Hail Hydra. So they just give that him the case and he's like, peace out. <laughs> that blew my mind. I was like, that is like, like you said, it's the smartest thing they could do. It's the simplest thing they could yeah. do, but it was like the biggest impact. It was yeah. freaking amazing. And yeah. and it's a nice little nod to, you know, comic book fans, you know, for that moment in, in the comics when, when, when yeah. um, Captain America said Hail Hydra and everyone's like, oh my God. But, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, what a cool scene. They brought back the S.H.I.E.L.D. dude. They brought back uh, Rumlo. You know, like, all the, literally, it was, like, all the exact same guys from the Winter Soldier scene, which was awesome. Um, and then Cap has to fight himself, uh, which was a cool scene, too. Uh, that is America's ass, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And uh, so so they're all going, doing their thing. Um, and then, uh, so let's see here. So Oh, and then, so Banner goes to get the Time Stone. Uh, from the Sanctum Santorum. So he shows up, and who's there but the Ancient One coming back from the original Doctor Strange movie, which that was a really cool surprise. Yeah, and I, was surprise. Like, man, I was like, man, they pulled all the stops out on this movie. And she's like throwing up little things, protecting the Sanctum from the alien fight in the first Avengers movie. Banner shows up. He's like, hey, you got to give me that stone. And she's like, fuck you. And just does that fucking astral punch in his chest. Knocks yep. the banner right out of the hole. <laughs> I'm going to knock know. the banner out of you. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, come on, you need to do it. They start talking about timeline. She's like, I can't give you the stone because then you're going to screw up my reality. And then that's where it comes up where he's like, you know, hey, but what if I return it at the same time? Then you're never really without it. So then, uh, they, so she's like, no, it's not going to happen. I love, too, that she's like, you're five years too early. Like, it's like, he's not Doctor Strange yet, you know? And she's like, Stephen Strange is performing surgery, like, down the road. And uh, and he's like, oh, man. So then he's like, well, I really need the stone. And he's like, I don't understand why Strange would have just gave it to Thanos. And she's like, What? He, he gave it up, like, willingly, and she's and he's like, yeah, and she's like, well, shit, like, if that's the case, like, he's the best of all of us, so here you go, like, go do what you gotta do, because he must have had a reason to do that, and um, so I love that, man, what a, what a cool callback to get um, Tilda Swinton to come back and do the Ancient One, all the little cameos that they just brought back were just phenomenal, and uh, so they get all their stones, um, but then they lose the Tesseract because Hulk doesn't like the stairs and he smacks Tony Stark <laughs> in the face with it, basically. They lose the briefcase. The Tesseract comes flying across the floor. Now Loki is there, arrested at the end of Avengers like he was in the original movie, but he grabs the Tesseract and just, poof, vanishes. So now at this point, this is where a lot of speculation comes into play, right? Because I know there's a bunch of people out there saying, like, no, uh, like, Loki's still dead. Like, like that stuff never happened because they went back in time and they, they took the Tesseract back from 1970 at that point. Mm-hmm. I, I think in that in that branch of reality, Loki is alive and he's gone now. <laughs> um, and, and I think they did that on purpose because of his Disney Plus show that they're going to be doing because the supposed... Um, 
way that they're going to do that TV show is him supposedly jumping through time, kind of messing with real life events, you know, putting his, um, you know, getting in people's your way ears, yeah, tricking people into doing this and doing that hmm. in, in our world. And what better way to do that than him time jumping around with the damn Tesseract, you know? So I think it sets up that TV show perfectly. And it also brings him back because obviously he was very dead from Infinity War. So, uh, pretty yeah. fucking dead. So pretty fucking dead. So super uh, dead. So any so what do, what are your guys' thoughts on on Loki? I mean, do you kind of just agree he's still out there, or does anybody think he's really gone because of the way they changed time, or uh, what, what's the what's the thoughts overall on Loki? I'll, I'll give. It I to actually you for kind of. All right, thanks. I, I kind of forgot about it at first until like you know like it was like probably the day or two after the, the I saw the movie. I was sitting there thinking about it, and it just like dawned on me. And I'm like, oh shit, he disappeared. Like what what does that mean? And it totally jacks the timeline up. And I absolutely think you're right. Like, it's got to go and play into the TV show and him bouncing around, doing different things. And at which point, I think at the end of whatever the TV show is, he's going to realize that, oh, shit, I guess I got to go back and deal with things. And then so he goes, he'll probably go back. So the timeline still remains intact, right? Uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking. I, yeah, I, this whole timeline timeline thing kind of frustrates me um, because again we're in a movie of fantasy yada yada but there are rules that you have to follow and I don't this everything they're doing in this timeline doesn't really matter because this isn't you know these aren't our heroes these, this is this is universe you know six one four you know what I mean where let's pretend our heroes come from universe 616. So, I mean, anything that happens in this universe, like, why does it even really matter? I don't know. And if they're going to be making a, a TV show based on a Loki from a different universe, then I don't know. I mean, I guess what if Loki got a hold of Is that what it's going to be? A TV show? What if Loki got a hold of the Tesseract in 2012? What would he do with it? I don't know. No, it's like, like I said, it's like him jumping through time, like, you know, kind of like, what if he had something to do with uh, Kennedy's assassination, or what if he had to do with Richard Nixon getting yeah. <laughs> kicked out of office because he I was get telling them secrets, you know? Like, I get it. He, it's going to be shit like that where he's kind of like just fucking with time. And, yeah, and, I, and I do think it's just going to be like, you know, something for fun. It's nothing that, you know, it's going to hold yeah. to the, the, the main connected universe or anything like that, which is a little disappointing. I was kind of hoping. I don't know. Kevin they... Feige said these TV shows are very connected to the movies. Yeah, I was kind of hoping that like once they fixed everything, it would correct things like, you know, like, I don't know. E even though Thanos said no resurrections, but maybe have some time to like. Other than Gamora, which is literally the only time displaced character, I don't know. Let's have some, you know, I don't know, baby Ant Man like hanging around. So. <laughs> well, I, I, I actually disagree with you about the alternate universe things. I think that it's not changing the time because if if I popped in and took the pencil from your desk right now, mm -hmm. and you know, fr Fred from five years, and then uh, from five years in the future, and then I go and I go on an adventure that takes me twenty years. But then I come back in time and set it right back there two seconds later. Like, nothing has changed. You've always had that pencil as far as you're concerned. So, like, that's what right. I'm saying. Like, they but, take but, the, the but gem, how... they do their thing, they bring it back, and it's like it never was gone. But how are they going to bring it back, though? Where, where are they going to – you know what I mean? Where are they going to take the bring the Tesseract back to? Like, like, where they took it, 1970, yeah. in that base, and the, it was just sitting in that safe, and yes, he just but, puts it back in the thing. But Loki still gets a hold of the Tesseract in 2012, several years later. Right, so that's the one aspect that's like, how did that fuck up the normal? And, and Steve Rogers told other Steve Rogers that Bucky's alive. So again, this oh, whole but time... he got hit with the, the, with the Mind Stone, so I think the assumption there... Is that when nope, Steve, do when that. Steve hits do him it. with the with the, <laughs> the time stone, that he didn't realize that a that Bucky was there, and then he didn't realize that he fought himself. Like Steve's gonna wake up and uh, like on that bridge and just like, what the fuck? How did I get here? I don't know. I yeah, <laughs> maybe that's just that's my reaching. Thoughts. Maybe uh, just yeah. my thoughts. But yeah, I don't know. So I we'll see what we'll see what happens. I mean it. That, I think Loki from from the main universe is still gone. I think that the Steve Rogers that we saw at the end of the movie wasn't the same Steve Rogers that went to the past. I think that was, you know, what I mean, whatever you do in your timeline or 
you know, if you go yeah. to the past, it doesn't affect your current timeline. So that Steve Rogers that we saw at the end of the movie was from a different timeline that, you know, went to the past kind of thing. I don't know if that makes any kind of sense. Yeah. But it wasn't, though, because it was the same one that put all the shit back because he talked about it. No, uh, uh-uh. you can't, but you can't, <laughs> you can't go, you can't go to the past and affect your same timeline or else, like they said, why not well, just it go just, back it creates and kill a branch. Thanos? There was an article I posted earlier today on, on the shout out, am I on the air Twitter page? Sure. Um, that that's basically the Russo brothers talking about the whole ending with Captain America. And they said when he went back and he stayed in 1940 or whatever, that created a separate branch. So he's in this off spot, off kind of timeline. Like that's separate from our main timeline. Oh, so he just allowed everything else to happen that already happened. He allowed Quicksilver to die, and that's what I was wondering. Because to me, that's what I took away from it was like that's very uncharacteristic of Captain America. He basically said, "Fuck everything else that's gonna happen yeah. in this world." I'm I just want to fall in love because I just want to dance. I was saying that too, but then I stopped myself and I thought, no, if you think about it more, Cap is the one person who would let sh- bad shit happen for the greater good because he knows that that's the way it's supposed to be to get to the point where they save everyone. It's, obviously, there's... So he like, would let... if, he, if he stopped 9-11, or let's not use real stuff, if he stopped the aliens from uh, the, the first Avenger attack, like if he went and told someone, like, hey, guys, guess what? Um, the Tesseract's going to get opened up and there's going to be all these aliens, so let's do something different. Like... He knows that that would change the timeline. He knows that that he, would change everything. It doesn't everything, matter, though. So he, he, sat by, he sat by and he let Hydra fucking take over S.H.I.E.L.D. all those exactly. fucking years. Yeah. He never told nobody, like, hey, by the way, <laughs> you guys are getting infiltrated. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense, and it's not for Captain the greater America. good. It's not for the What was the greater good? No, 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 living no. a fucking married life? Yeah. <laughs> That's maybe, not Cap. Again, Friggins, I'd agree if it had to do with an Infinity Stone, but the whole Hydra thing, like, how many people got fucked over and, and killed because of that shit? Like, he... W- I don't think Captain America would just sit and let that happen. No, I mean, they were... Like, S.H.I.E.L.D. was work. He would let Carter and everybody else work for Hydra? But no. So, in the, in, the Peggy, in the Peggy Carter TV series, they talk about that she she's married at one point with two kids... So did Cap just completely fuck that universe out of her ever getting married and, and having kids? Did he make out with his own grandniece later on? Yes, hmm. he did. He okay. sure did. But they don't. They never say who she married. They just say a guy from the one hundred first or whatever. A guy so he like, saved. He saved. Or Captain America saved his life or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's him. Subtle. Yeah. He saved his own life. What a douche, man. <laughs> he saved his own life. Forget everybody else's. <laughs> and he made out with his niece. Hey, Black Widow, just so you know, if you go to Boromir, you're going to have to kill somebody. So let's... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, so, okay, we got way the fuck off topic. All right, uh, yeah. So... <laughs> let's go back in time and reset <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Coordinates twelve point six eight nine two. Um, so where the fuck are we? So so basically so yeah so they lost the tesseract because Loki bounced. So then they're like, what do what do we do? And we're almost out of pin particles. So they decide let's uh, let's go back to a further time where we're gonna have pin particles and we're gonna have the tesseract at the same time. So they go back to uh, an old army base of Shield where. Um, they are able to see young Hank Pym with the old school Ant Man helmet on the desk, which was pretty awesome. Um, you know, very, and, and very impractical though. Very impractical. <laughs> it was massive. I mean, and... he's not Tony Stark. He doesn't get it right on the first try. <laughs> so, uh, so they get him out of the office. Captain America steals some Pym particles, right? And then fucking gets. Then he sees Peggy. He ends up having to duck into an office. It turns out, of course, to be her office. And he's like, "Oh, looking at her through the blinds," and it's a very sweet moment. And then Tony finds the Tesseract, gets it, and then runs into his dad. In a very cool moment, he, meet, he meets up with Howard Stark, and he says his name is Howard Potts, <laughs> and they talk. Yeah. And it's a really cool moment. He's talking about, his dad's talking about his wife being pregnant, and obviously it's Tony, and, and he's like, oh, are you nervous? He's like, oh, I'm so nervous, I don't want to mess it up. And they just have this really sweet moment together. Uh, it's very cool, especially when gives Tony just gives him the hug at the end, and he's <laughs> like, uh, he's like, thank you for everything you do for this country, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and uh, just, this is a really cool moment. And for the first time ever, they connected a TV show 
the Jarvis Butler is from the Peggy Carter television show. Uh, so, right. so they have actually connected the dots of a television show to the movie universe, which is pretty cool. So, um, I would have liked more connections, but we'll, yes, we won't get we into that. Like, I know. Why didn't that. why didn't we run into Coulson at any point? That was, uh, that made me. Or sad. May. But just, yes, just May. Or Quake, awesome. man. Give me some Quake. Oh, oh, Quake's she would be so great in the movies. Anyway, I, I want to ask about the Tony Stark with his dad thing real quick, though. Did anyone else like? Okay, so Tony Stark, uh, Howard Stark, has been played by two different actors, and I was kind of surprised <laughs> and they look that they went alike. With, <laughs> yeah, they look nothing alike, and nothing I was alike. surprised they went with him, and they Why? didn't go with the guy who played the younger version of it. like when. Why though? Because in it was, 19, America, it was 1970. Because remember, his, his dad was played by the same guy in uh, Civil War when they show that Winter Soldier right. killed him. So and, and he was in and that was like a couple years later uh, in like Iron Man two. Uh, that was the same actor that was the dad in Iron Man 2. Yeah. But in, in Captain America really. First Avenger, they used the other dude. Yeah, but so. that was that was also fucking First Avenger, though. That was in the 40s. Like That was way earlier than the 70s. Uh, that's a good point. Ever since 30, it's been the 70s, it's been the on. other guy. Because that other guy was in Ant-Man 2. So, like, so they've used him multiple times. Dominic Cooper was only in First Avenger and the Peggy Carter television show. <laughs> that was the only times that they ever really used him. Good point. Good point. So that's, okay. that's, that's a young, young Howard Stark, which still, once again, looks nothing yeah. like John Slattery, who plays John Howard Stark later right. in his life. <laughs> nothing like him. I mean, not even close. Some, some shit really happened in the 60s. It was, it was, it was a hell of yeah. a time. You also so. grew a <laughs> yeah. fucking foot. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so they get what they need. Um, so we go to... Uh, Morag, which is the planet from the first Guardians of the Galaxy, like I said, War Machine Nebula <laughs> there, and they see Star-Lord <laughs> doing his little dance and singing, and it was awesome hearing it from the perspective of not through the headphones, <laughs> and he's like, yes. come and catch that was amazing. <laughs> and then War Machine just bitch slaps him, boom, <laughs> and knocks him out, <laughs> and fucking, uh, and then they, they get the orb, and uh, at this point, uh, Nebula's like, we need to hurry up and get this shit because we're not the only ones looking for this stuff. And he's like, and War Machine's like, well, who else is looking for it? And he's, she's like, my dad. And then so then Nebula, because she's all kind of half robotic, she's linked up with the Nebula from 2014. And, and they sync up and Thanos gets to see that she's tied. And, um, and the Black Order's like, yeah, man, she's she, somebody from the future here. And, and, they're, and she, they can watch her memories and they kind of get a glimpse of what they're trying to space do. Space internet, I swear. Yeah, man, they got some great ass fucking internet up there. And Super so, great Wi Fi. Uh, Thanos is like, show me everything. And then at that point, we also meet Gamora. But it's Gamora from 2014. She's pre Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, still Thanos' daughter. They talk about her having to go to Ronin's ship and all this stuff, which is really cool. He always seen it from a different angle, like of the events that are about to play out. And, um,. So but I think it's only like what, like two days pre Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Because yes. Star Lord's on Morad, and yeah, yeah, because okay. he tries to yeah. sell the orb after yeah. that, and that's when she meets up with him. So yeah, so I mean, so you can kind of because I've heard some people bitch like, oh, she flip flopped too quick, and I was like, well, she no, was she already was... pretty close to flip flopping yeah. in the other movies, so you know, it makes sense, I think, you know. Um, so at this point, so they get the orb. The Rhodey and Nebula are ready to bounce. Rhodey takes off, but then Nebula gets stuck, and um, and then Thanos comes and gets her, and they keep her prisoner, and that's when they decide to swap her out with the other Nebula so she can infiltrate um, the Avengers and see what's going on. Now we go to Volmir or whatever, and, and this is where Hawkeye and Black Widow are there, ready to get the Soul Stone. And if you watched Infinity War, you know that there's only one way to get the Soul Stone uh, from the Red Skull, <laughs> and uh, that's to sacrifice what you love most. And uh, a life for a life, a soul for a soul. And um, so they start talking it through, like, you know, okay, you know what we gotta do, yes I do, alright, let's do this, and then I don't think Hawkeye's we're both like, talking yeah, about I don't think thing. we're talking about the same thing, and uh, so they start fighting each other, which confused the fuck out of my daughter, she was like, why are they fighting, I don't get this, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, just wait, they're trying to do something, 
Yeah. This was yeah. actually a very hard movie to watch with a five year old who, like, with time travel oh, yeah. and everything else, she was like, "What the fuck is going on right now?" Like, yeah. you know, like, wasn't this person dead? And why is Captain America find himself? And like, there yeah. was a lot of uh, that explaining to do. <laughs> so, um, so, so it was a really cool scene though because Hawkeye takes her down, she takes him down, and she's like, "Let me do this." Like, you have a family, and he's like, "No, I went fucking crazy and I started killing people." Like, I need to do it, and and so. He starts to run, and he's getting ready to jump off the mountain, and, um, you know, she electrifies him, then he shoots an arrow at her, and so finally he's about to jump off, and then she runs and jumps off with him, grabs him, shoots up like a harness, and they're dangling there off the mountain, and she's just like, let me go, let me go, let me do this, and he's like, no, 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 and she kicks off the mountain, and she falls to her death, just like Gamora in Infinity War, and... Black Widow's dead! And that was a shocker for me, man. Like, I mean, you knew it was kind of coming, but they they did it so well that you didn't know which one was going to really happen because they traded off so much. It, it had to be her. Obviously, Clint had a family that was going to come back later on, and, you know, she... she, she the family for her was the Avengers and she needed to bring everybody back. And I just, I was like, wow, I never in a million years thought that they were going to kill black widow off in this movie. So that kind of rocked me a little bit too. I was just like, damn man, because once again, this is a character who's been with us since Iron Man two, literally the, almost the full 10 years as this character through each movie. And, um, knowing she's going to get a solo movie down the road too. I just didn't even think for a second <laughs> they would have killed her not also. even for a second dude I I, was I, shocked. I, yeah for I, sure. i've been waiting for Almost hawkeye surprised. to die ever since um, <laughs> yeah freaking like Age every of Ultron, every movie right? <laughs> right you didn't see that coming I was like yep here it comes here it comes here. <laughs> what didn't see that coming did you <laughs> oh so let's, no. let's so what are you guys thoughts what do you where what were we thinking when black widow passes so, it, it, as hard as that scene, you know, as, as sad as that scene was, and as it, you know, it was a pretty, it was really. First of all, them fighting over who's going to kill themselves, I thought was really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I honestly, I, I was kind of a hoping that they would figure something out, um, you know, a way to be able to get the stone without, you know, cheating the system, right? Like that's kind of like what Black Widow does really well is kind of like take stuff without that people don't want them her to take and i was just kind of hoping she would figure something else out and and at the same time i'm like dude i, I just saw this scene last year like why are we doing this again <laughs> i swear to you she was the same pose as gamora yeah <laughs> like, yeah i don't know I, 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 fine i disagree with you i thought um that it gave a little bit more gravitas to the whole situation and that it like actually meant something because too often we get where the hero dies but then they come back and no and the hero's never really you know the the threat so i thought this was uh i didn't mean to say threat a threat at dying um so this was a really interesting choice and like we've been saying it was like a huge surprise for all of us so i just thought it brought like a little bit more seriousness and it brought stakes to what was going on and the whole like battle to kill yourself was so i mean there's just so much emotions and that that both of them cared for each other each with each other so much that they didn't want to let the other one die that they wanted to take their own life to let the other one live like that was just it's just so unique and something we haven't really seen in in these type of superhero movies um you know you've seen in other kind of action movies but especially in the MCU and that moment they had as they're like hanging there, you know that each one doesn't want to let the other one go. And, and then, you know, Hawkeye has to finally do that. And it's just, it was deep, man. I, I got to say, Jeremy Renner pulled out all the stops in his performances. I mean, it was like almost every time he was on screen, I was pretty much bawling my eyes out. Like, yeah, he was great, he? yeah, yeah. Every time so I great. saw that haircut, I was like, "Oh God!" What are they doing? <laughs> I just thought that that scene was phenomenal. I mean, one of the most impactful scenes of the whole film. Yeah, no, it, it was man. Um, I guess I just don't have a heart. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so here, here's where my thoughts go upon this too. Is like so they break into three teams. And then, or four teams, and like, 
they really felt like let's send the two non-powered people to this weird planet to get this soul stone yeah <laughs> like that's it, it, and funny that they could all go to these planets and everybody could breathe just fine on all these planets like they didn't need any kind oh, of yeah. <laughs> oxygen mask or <laughs> yeah. anything right yeah um and, and, and then and then too you had to sacrifice what you loved what if it was Rhodey and fucking nebula that went to I this planet like would it not, thing. Would it not have worked the same thing. He's all like, pushing I don't know. I guess I'll throw like, my suit in there. <laughs> right? <laughs> my argument is that it's like the power of the soul stone. The, the soul stone draws that type of a connection. So, like, they thought they were just randomly saying, eh, Hawkeye, me, me and you will go. Because it makes sense that Neb- Nebula would go to Morag because she knows about it. She knows what to look for. Um, it makes sense that Tony and Banner are, are yeah, and, and Ant-Man and... Uh, 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 Cap would go back to the original because they were there. They can blend in. They can look like themselves. So it's just kind of like Hawkeye and I mean, I guess Hawkeye and, and Black Widow were there I mean, too. But in like, my I opinion, feel like I think Rocket would 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 be more suited to go to like one of the the planets. Yeah, I don't know. It's sent, yeah. and let's send Hulk and Thor to Asgard. They're like buddies. I, I just think that um, with I think it has to do with more the power of the Soul Stone itself. I think that it just draws that kind of um, connection, that kind of uh, that's just it's, it's very its Star Wars Destiny kind of thing. Sure. I, I get you, I get you. But... Well, and I think we had to do it with two characters that you could see one of them getting disposed of. So you know, it was so you could have that moment of like, well, which one are they going to go with? You know, whereas and... I think any other pairing, it would have been kind of like, well, I could I could have saw who was going to go off the cliff pretty easily. <laughs> And and what are the rules of the soul stone? Is that just to get the initial soul stone? So what happens to the next guy? They're like, hey, can I borrow can I borrow the infinity gauntlet? Ah, <laughs> oh, dude, you gotta freaking kill your puppy, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, and I want to know That's how Captain question. America. I want to know how Captain America put it back. <laughs> Maybe you like you don't have to sacrifice dude, it. You, you just, just gave it to it Red Skull. I want to yeah, see yeah, him yeah, talk to like... Red Skull and be like, oh shit, it's you. Oh, shit. I gotta give this yeah, back to you, dog. Cool. But I gotta go. Hopefully, we'll catch up later. Yeah, and then then what happens there? Is it like a? Uh, is it like when you take stuff back at um, you know, Target? <laughs> hey, you got the Soul Stone. Okay, you can fucking get Black Widow back. Here you go. All right. <laughs> no, oh, no, no there returns, you go. Buddy. No returns. All sales are final. All sales. <laughs> All sales. <laughs> so, he just he just keeps it then. No one yeah. goes past. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Some he kept it for Vision. So they give it a rebuild vision. Uh, so yeah, so we uh, so we got that, and then basically our last team is Thor and Rocket. They go back to Asgard. We're in the events of Thor: The Dark World. It's basically right before the elves strike. Um, he sees Jane, and then Rocket's got like this little needle, basically, and he's like, "I'm just gonna go poker with this shit and get the ether out, and we're gonna go." And um, and then Thor sees his mom. He has like a panic attack. He's like, "I can't do this shit." And then his mom shows up, and she's like, "Is, is that you?" And he's like, "No, no, what's up?" You know. <laughs> and uh, they had this really cool moment, and and I love it because she knew. She goes, "You're not the Thor I know." And he's like, "Oh, of course I am." And she's like, "I was raised by witches. I know, I know, boy." You know. And she's yeah. like, "You know." So he's like, "Yes, it's me." I come from the future you know and and uh so they have this great talk man once again going back to cameos it was so cool to see renee russo back as the mom because it's been so long i I was like this is great yeah because she was so cool as uh the mom and and just having them have that you know and he's so broken and he's like mom i miss you so much like i've lost fucking everything in my world you know and just you know now we need to do this and you know, Rocket's like, fuck, we gotta go, I got this shit, let's roll, <laughs> you know, which they literally got fucking Natalie Portman back for that scene, and she has no dialogue, and just, like, fucking pops in and pops out real fast. Like, I feel like that was, like, a deleted scene from Ragnarok. No, yeah, dude, I think they, it's or, deleted. No, they got her back, dude. World. I it is confirmed, they literally confirmed? brought her in. Yeah, they brought her in, and she was at the premiere when they did it last week, like, like yeah, like, I, I feel like the scene was probably bigger, and they fucking knocked it down <laughs> because she probably did talk at one point or showed rocket to, like you know hit her with the fucking thing and get nah. the ether out and they probably just just sh- shot it down just because the movie was already three hours long 
But um, yeah. so he's like, we got to go. And, and he's like, okay, you know, I love you, mom. It's been so great to see you. He tries to almost save her. He's like, listen, I got to tell you about later. And she's like, no, don't fuck with my life. Like I did whatever my time is my time. Like leave, let it play out the way it's supposed to be. And um, he's getting ready to leave. And then he's like, wait a minute. And he sticks his hand out. And uh, the mom's like, yeah, this this takes a while sometimes. <laughs> and then whoosh, fucking Molnir is back and fucking in his hand. And he's like, yes, I'm still worthy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was a really cool moment, man. The hammer is back. And he takes off with the hammer, which at first I'm like, that's fucked up. Because when Thor goes to fight in fucking Dark World now, he's got no hammer. He's going to get his ass kicked. Right? right? <laughs> he's going to jump off the side of the building and hold his hand out. And just oh, plop. yeah. <laughs> plop. You know, so, so uh, he comes back. We got all our stones. Everybody shows back up, and then they realize Nat's not there. Where's Nat at? Where's Nat at? And Jeremy Renner's just like crying, and he's like, she's gone. And everybody's just like, fuck. Um, really cool scene. And then I don't know if you guys caught this. I didn't catch it the first time, but I caught it the second time. Right before they all go into the time tunnels to do the heist, it's actually Black Widow that has the last words, and she says, see you in a minute. And, fucking, oh, and and now that pays that pays off so much bigger knowing she she's the one that does not come back, you know. Because remember, like it, it, in in our timeline, they're only gone for like a couple seconds, you know. Um, so even though they've been gone for so long trying to pull off these things, you know, the machine starts and she goes, "See you in a minute." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "Oh, no, it hurts even more," you know. It's like it's like fuck, she didn't come back. Um, so. They Tony makes a new gauntlet, basically another Iron Man hand, and puts all the stones on it. And he's like, "Okay, here we go. Somebody's got to wield the gauntlet." Thor's like, "Let me do it. I'll do it. I'm the strongest Avenger." <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and they're like, "No, dude, you're not fucking in any kind of fucking mood to do this shit. Like, there's no way." And then Hulk's like, "I got to do it." He's like, "It's mostly gamma energy. Like, I was born to do this. Let me do it." And and so he puts the glove on, and Tony's like. Okay, when you snap, just bring back everybody that was gone. We need to come back right to this point. Don't change nothing else, because, of course, he's trying to make sure he doesn't lose his fucking daughter. You know, so they're like, just bring everybody back to this point. Don't change nothing. So he's like, all right. And then so he puts the glove on, and it just fucking starts kicking his ass, dude. He's just, oh, <laughs> everywhere trying to do it. Yep. He can't even fucking close his fingers. The shit's killing him so bad. His arm's getting all fried. And then finally, he snaps. And uh, so... You're like, oh shit, did it work? And the shutters open, and uh, Iron Man or Ant Man's looking out the window, and he's like, oh, I think it worked. There's birds and shit. So at this time, remember the Nebula that went back is actually 2014 Nebula, and she sends Thanos through the fucking time portal, and Thanos' ship comes blowing up, and he just fucking drops. 50 missiles down and blows up the entire Avengers fucking center, which I'll tell you guys at this point, when I saw it the first time, I was like, he just killed everybody and we're going to have to go back in time and and, and prevent (laughs) this attack again, because there's no way anybody just survived this explosion, but everybody survived somehow, even though Hawkeye fell like five stories through rubble and like somehow just was like, Oh, my back. When he I don't up. know how Ant Man survived that shit. Like when it yeah. happened, I was like, "Fuck, Ant Man just He's died." Dead. Like He's I thought there. he was dead for sure. No, he shrunk down, so he was all right. <laughs> Crazy. No, yeah, he gets blown the fuck back. And, I mean, it, it was a hell of an explosion, dude. My daughter jumped so bad when that shit hit. She was like, ah! <laughs> and, uh, it just, it hits hard. And and, and, um, and it, the funny thing, like, even though it hits hard like that, like, you still see it coming. And, like, it's still, like, impacted yeah. us that way. <laughs> yeah. Like, he looks up, you see the missile, like, oh, there's a missile coming. What happens when the <laughs> missile hits, fool? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> levels the whole fucking thing dude um it's craziness so then so everybody's trying to get out of the rubble uh poor rocket man he's like i'm dying it's crushing me get me the fuck oh, out i can't was, breathe you know, i can't breathe, I can't breathe. Yeah. I mean, it was like it was like spider-man and fucking homecoming you know when he was all trapped in the oh rubble. yeah, he's like, yeah help yeah. me you know and he's just mm-hmm. like help me help me and um so 
uh, Thanos comes down and he tells Nebula, like, go get the gauntlet. And then he just chills, man. Sits up like a straight G, takes his helmet off. He's just like, I'm just going to wait right here. Bring me the fucking stones and I'm going to snap this shit. Because they just did all the work for me. And, um, and then Which pisses this... me off. Like, 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 come on, <laughs> Thanos. Like, why are you telling Nebula to do it? Like, go have Ebon Maul or fucking Corvus go get it. Like, not Nebula. Come on. I know, because he hasn't even brought the fucking Black Order down at this point. So he's just, yeah. like, straight chilling. And then fucking... Uh, um, and then I think he he's what he see peeps this is this surprises me that you don't like that like I feel like that's part of his like plan like his p- master planning his thinking like yeah. I felt like he knew someone was gonna come to fight him so he's like I'm gonna wait here for these motherfuckers to roll up here and then I'm gonna kick their ass like yeah but so, I'm just saying uh, why didn't he send somebody else of course he's gonna stay there but send somebody else that's not Nebula the person that is going to eventually fuck you over. Yeah, but this years later. <laughs> yeah, and she's and she did her job. Like he sent her through the future. She she yeah, successfully she brought, him. brought him through. Like she's she's like looking pretty good right now. <laughs> I don't know. Like it, honestly, and if you think about timeline, like that again, days before she's hanging out on Ronan's ship, and Ronan's like, "I have an Infinity Stone, and I'm going to kill Thanos." Wait. Wait, you got an Infinity Stone? You're going to kill Thanos? All right, fuck that dude. I am cool with you, Ronan. <laughs> like, she literally fucks over Thanos that same week. And now she's all of a sudden, I can't. I, I, I can't. I can't. He's going to get me. Like, come on, man. She's really wishy-washy. I mean. <laughs> yeah, she's always been wishy-washy. I, I feel like this was a missed opportunity for her to, to do what that chick did in the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um you know when she put, when she grabbed the stone, she's like, you know what, Thanos, fuck you, and then put on this oh. and then put the gauntlet <laughs> on herself. I thought that would have been great. <laughs> so, so we still got Nebula, the uh, future Nebula, is still on the ship, and then Gamora comes and she's like, tell me about us, like what happens of us in the future, and she's like, I try to kill you a couple times, and then we become friends, and then now we're we're really good, we're we're sisters again. So then Gamora kind of flips sides at that point. She's like, all right, let's go. Let's go fucking fix this shit. So then they go. They confront uh, old school Nebula, who now has the gauntlet in her hands because she knocked down Hawkeye. And then future Gamora actually kills past Gamora. Uh, oh, no. Future Nebula kills past Nebula, which is crazy because at that point I was expecting, like, back to the future shit. Like, she was just going to vanish. <laughs> After that <laughs> right? point, like, she's, she, she shot her and was just, ooh, shit. She just vanishes away. But no, she doesn't. Um, That's a good point because you can't put Nebula back and you can't put Thanos back and you can't put the Black Order back. So that does fuck up the timeline. Damn it, Fred. You already. <laughs> uh, I, I was. That was going to be one of my bitches moments. Oh, my bad. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Do you want to dress that now? Or... <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, I don't know. I, it, no. No. <laughs> All right, so at this point, uh, Cap, Iron Man, Thor, they're getting ready to fight Thanos. They're like, all right, he's there. He's just waiting for us. Let's go fuck this dude up. And that's when Thor fucking strikes down the electricity. His beard braids up all cool, and fucking his eyes start glowing. And now he's got his full Thor suit on, but he's still fat, which is awesome. And the and hammer in one He's got the hammer the and Stormbreaker, dude. And when he was fighting with both of them together, I was just like, oh, my God. Like, just fucking nerdgasm. It was so cool the way he was fucking utilizing and both of them together and then, so he comes out uh iron man cap they're just fighting thanos now this is crazy right here because like to me this was also another thing that made me start thinking too thanos was so fucking unstoppable in this fight with yep. no gauntlet yeah i felt like he struggled more with them in infinity war with a fucking yes! gauntlet on his hand <laughs> Don, d- dude, Don, you are literally taking all my shit. <laughs> that was literally like what I was going to say. Because yes, he had four stones and kind of struggling with. I get it, Doc Strange, Spider Man, Guardians, and Iron Man. But again, he had some heavy ass fucking hitters, including Captain Marvel, and he still beat everybody's ass without any stones. Without so. any stones, yeah, man. And and his fucking sword, dude. Oh my god, how cool! I that want thing one. Was it basically was a fucking wicked. helicopter blade. Yeah, he was just that he spinning can around. Control. Yep. Yeah, it, that thing was fucking nuts, and it was super fucking sharp. It, like he fucking shredded Captain Shield with that fucking thing, dude. Like yeah, so that thing did. bashed through fucking vibranium, which is crazy. Um, so yeah, so yeah, so this fucking somehow Thanos just three of the strongest motherfuckers in the MCU can't like like Thanos just 
fucking nothing, dude. Just fighting him off, fighting him off. He's getting ready to kill fucking Thor, dude. He's got he's got Stormbreaker in Thor's chest, and he's like, ha, 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 I'm about to kill your ass. Yep, knocks and out fucking, Iron Man. Yep. And then the fucking, and then the hammer comes swinging by, and you're like, okay, cool, Thor just summoned the fucking hammer. And then, nope, boom, <laughs> Captain America's holding that shit, and you're just like, what? And fucking, and then Thor's like, I knew it, <laughs> which was awesome. A, a moment, Don. I wish I was there with you to hear like your reaction with that. You oh, know what dude. I mean? Because, oh man, like me, fucking friggins, and his cousin. Like I, don't, I screamed. Oh yeah. Oh, oh dude, me my too. theater erupted. The whole theater was just like, Wah! like lost their minds when that shit happened. We were in recliner seats, and I like literally started kicking my feet with joy. I was yeah. just like, I teared up because I just got so happy. <laughs> Dude, it, it what an awesome. incredible scene that once again harkens all the way back to Age of Ultron when he kind of started to lift it and then couldn't do it, and mm-hmm. they just went back to that and just like, and then Cat Man straight up G style just he's run he's throws the shield he's like woo, 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 with the fucking hammer all spinning it shooting electricity through the ground and then there's that slow motion shot where he just fucking bashes thanos fucking in an uppercut with the hammer yeah and I, was just like, I lost oh my, my shit. God. i love when he threw the shield and then threw the hammer that hit the shield to create yeah. that like that, that little shock wave yeah, exactly. oh god that was good because that happened in the first avengers yeah. moment oh dude and then even when thor would would when he clanked Molnir with fucking Stormbreaker together and it would shoot the electricity out. All oh, fucking crazy cool. powerful. Just so super cool. Um, but man, what a fucking crazy shot, right? So so he's using the hammer. He's getting some good licks in on Thanos, but then Thanos just starts fucking pounding back again and he just starts with his fucking crazy helicopter blade, just starts chopping down his shield to almost nothingness. And then it looks like like this is it, man. It looks like this is it. Iron Man's down. Thor's down. Cap's fucking down. His shield is broken. He can barely stand up. And when he finally does stand up, like Thanos' ship starts beaming down all kinds of those creatures from Infinity War, and the Black Order comes down. And Thanos is just like, y'all fucked up. Like I, you made it personal. And now I'm about to kill this whole fucking planet. <laughs> He's like, I don't give no fucks anymore. He's like, you all fucked up. And then, yeah. and, and then, but Cap fucking straps on his fucking little piece of his shield that's left, and he's like, just him by himself, by man. himself, dude, against like fucking a million people, dude, just ready to roll. And um, so, uh, you know, he's getting so you're like, something's got to happen here, right? And then you hear Sam on his fucking communicator, dude, and he's just like, Cap, Cap, are you there? On your left. And I was like, oh, no. That was dope. <laughs> on your left. And then on his left, the fucking Doctor Strange portal starts opening up. And Black Panther with Shuri and Okoye, they come walking through all G-style. Like, what's up, Cap? We're here. And then fucking another portal opens up. And the Guardians of the Galaxy fucking jump out. And Star-Lord fucking flies in. And Spider-Man fucking comes swinging in. And you're just like, oh, my God. Just like, like, they did so well with the timing of that. Like, you see. See, first you see Drax and, and like you know Mantis. You're like, yay! I'm really excited because like I see them. <laughs> and then you see Star Lord. You're like, yay! I'm excited. And then you see Spider Man. Like, oh my god! I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, once again, the theater I was in when Spider Man swung in just lost their minds. Everybody yes. Crazy. Oh, our it's like I forgot best. about him, dude. Dude, uh, it was so good. You know, and then Doctor Strange shows up all floating in with Wong and shit, and then they basically yeah. brought in all of Wakanda. They're just like, what's up? We'll just bring Wakanda in here. Yeah. And then fucking, and then, oh, we've all back. Yeah, we've we, all back. Yep. <laughs> and we got like, some fucking, wizards and shit. Dude is crazy, man. As guardians. Now, I will say, missed opportunity. I wanted a really big-ass portal to open up in the middle of the sky, and then you see a giant-ass helicarrier fly through. Like, you know, yeah. Nick Fury standing <laughs> yeah, at the Yeah, with shields. Dude, yeah. that would have been awesome. Yeah. Oh man, total missed opportunity. I didn't even think about that, but now I want it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> very, very cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, you see fucking Wasp show up, you see fucking Scarlet Witch come back, you know, like fucking Bucky, and then Falcon comes flying in and uh it just Pepper. dude, Pepper comes in in her Iron Man suit. And just like, oh, dude, everybody's back. And then I love it. Spider-Man goes right up to Iron Man, and he's just like, he's like, hey, you know, what's up, Mrs. Stark? Like, I don't know what happened. Remember when I got all dusty? And then, like, and then all of a sudden everything went to black. And then when I woke up, Doc Strange was like, it's five years later. We need to go help them. <laughs> and then here we yeah. are. And Iron Man just grabs him and hugs him. And I'm like, man. oh, man. Like, man, that again. hit me. That hit oh. me. I don't know. 
Oh god, that so me. sweet, dude. So sweet. I was it just was like, good. oh. It was good. And then yeah, and then and Peter he goes, "This is real nice." <laughs> After he <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, "That's awesome, dude." He, Tom Holland, best Spider-Man ever. He's so good. I agree, and, man. And it's just so good. And uh, so yeah, everybody's there. I'd love it because he's like, "Anybody else you want to bring back?" And then uh, Wong's like. Who else are we gonna fucking bring in yeah. here? You know, Valkyrie comes in I, on the fucking I, on the horse and everything. Dude. On a fucking horse. I didn't see it, but I heard the rat. Uh, some of the Ravagers were in there from the yeah. Guardians. I was like, oh, I gotta look for that the next time I see oh, it. I didn't, they, I didn't see it either. They were definitely there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I didn't. See, yeah, I didn't see that at all. But very, very, very and, cool, man. Just and, everybody and, and shows up. The great line, and I had my um ten year old on the uh, third uh, viewing of this uh, shit. She's uh, she's eleven, sorry, um with me. And then like right as Cap said it, she said it along with him, like Avengers. And she's like, "Assemble!" I was like, "God, I'm so fucking proud of you." <laughs> but, yeah, yeah it was like, great. Dude, we, line, wait, we waited man. all those years to hear that assemble, and they finally gave it to us. He's just like Avengers. Assemble and then just, they just go to war, dude. Everybody's just fucking everybody up. Ant Man finally shows back up, and of course he's Giant Man at this point. And I love he just runs up to one of those flying things and just fucking punches it in the face. It fucking yeah. like it knocks it down and knocks it uh, down. just crazy, dude. Like you know, and um, it just this battle right here is is the greatest cinematic thing that's fucking ever happened in the world. Like it right. is just it is just un heard of it's unseen it is literally comic book come to life it is the craziest fucking thing you've ever seen on a big screen just I've... seeing all of these characters fucking just doing shit you're just like what the hell is going on right now i think before this the greatest like cinematic epic fight of two opposite uh you know areas clashing against each other was big trouble in little china in that alleyway <laughs> Nah, I don't know. The <laughs> biggest one, but I I do agree. This is definitely uh, in the running for the lead, if if not the leader. I mean, I I yeah. can't see anything else being bigger than that. No, there's she literally nothing. There's literally pretty nothing. much everybody over the last ten years and all these movies. Like anyone that it, could do anything is in this fight. <laughs> oh, yeah, like for sure. it's for incredible, sure. dude. You know, and you're seeing people team up for the first time that you've never seen, and it's just, it's 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 crazy, dude. And you brought up the scene earlier, peeps, about Scarlet Witch going face to face with Thanos, and fucking, Gosh. she's like, she's like, you took everything from me, and he's like, bitch, I don't even know you, and he's she's like, you will, and she's like, wobblage with fucking her shit, and yeah. she fucks him up, dude. She fucking dude. throws him up in the sky. She rips all his fucking armor off. He's like freaking out. He's like, make it rain, fucking you know, like because like yes. he's about to die. And then even Corvus Glaive is like, but what about our troops? And he's like, fuck those troops. Fuck Just them. make that shit rain. <laughs> he's like, they're going to kill you. This bitch is about to rip me apart. Like, make it rain. Yeah. And then so then all these missiles come down and all the wizards from fucking Doctor Strange are all throwing up little shields. And, and like, yeah, it was crazy, dude. And then um, and then there, you got that real cool moment of all the girls kind of coming together, which was really, really tight to see all them kind of pair up. Um, you know, basically, and then Captain Marvel comes back, and at this point, the first time I watched the movie, I forgot all about Captain Marvel at this point. I wasn't even thinking that, dude. And then all of a sudden, the ship starts firing missiles in the sky, and they're like, what the fuck is it firing at? And then she comes, blah, 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 right through the ship, (laughs) just fucking crushes through it, dude. She just motorboats the whole freaking ship. She did it like Ronin's ship in the fucking other movie. Like, she just fucking flies right through it, and then fucking comes down, and she's like, what's up, y'all? And and then so she goes to grab the gauntlet to get rid of it and then she fights Thanos a little bit which we talked about a little bit earlier like she totally holds her own she's like bending fucking Thanos' hand back and shit like you know and, and just the shit's going crazy at this fucking point man mm-hmm. like it, it's just nuts dude and um so he grabs, yeah, because Thanos grabs the gauntlet at this point, and he's about to snap, and then Captain Marvel grabs it, she pulls it fucking off of his hand, and then they start fighting, and then that's when he pulls off the fucking power stone, bitch slaps her in the face with it, she yep. goes flying, and then he puts the th- glove back on, then Tony runs in, jumps on top of the glove, and then finally he knocks Tony off, and then he does the, I told you, I'm inevitable, snap, and fucking, but nothing happens. And he looks at the glove, and there's no stones on it. And then all the stones are in fucking Tony's hand on his Iron Man glove. And he's like, I am Iron Man. Boom! Snaps it. And fucking all of fucking Thanos' fucking army just starts turning to dust. And Thanos, I just love the moment they kind of zero in on Thanos looking like defeated. He's like, fuck, this sucks. I'm done. And he sits <laughs> down. 
and he just turns to dust, dude. Knocks everything out. It's fucking such a cool scene, dude. Love that, love that they went back to the I Am Iron Man fucking moment. I mean, how cool is that? That I mean, that, that was from awesome. the first movie again all the way to the end movie. The saga started with Iron Man. It ends with Iron Man. And mm-hmm. just uh, what a crazy death, dude. He is like charcoaled the, down the whole side of his body where he snapped and just kind of catatonic. And Spider-Man comes in. He's like, we won, Mr. Stark. We won. We won. You know, and, and it's like Pepper, he doesn't even really yeah, hear he doesn't him. Even like know it, dude. Yeah. Pepper moves him aside. She's like, Tony, you we're can gonna rest. Be, we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. You know, and then he and then his arc reactor fucking dies out. And that's it. And then she stays strong until he passes and then she loses it. And it's just this fucking heartbreaking moment, dude. Like he's just gone, dude. Our <laughs> Iron Man or Tony Stark just that we've been with for all these rides mentor and leader and just gone dude it's just like fuck what a what a just heartbreaking gut-wrenching moment because they finally won this fight they did everything they needed to do um and it was done you know and um some other cool moments kind of just trying trying to think about this big fight all in one boat dude (laughs) it's hard the avengers female scene was pretty dope all the female team but i like when tony goes to um dr strange and he says like so is this the one thing that you saw and he's like i can't tell you or it won't come true you know and then i love the moment right that moment right before he snaps he looks at dr strange dr strange sticks up the one finger (laughs) you know like this is it this is the only way you know and then and then he does it and it's just like those moments again between these characters dude it's just it's fucking mind-blowing just this whole thing man um, in that then, scene too, there was a couple points that really stood out. Where like when they when they got the gauntlet and they were playing keep away, and like Black Panther just like walks up like a pimp oh, and he's yeah. like, "Give, Give me it to the me. club!" <laughs> like, I was like, "Holy shit!" And then with Spider Man when he does the instant activate instant kill, I was yeah. like, "Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> finally get to see it, yeah. dude. That yeah, was that awesome." Was dope. Yeah. Activate is to kill, and the fucking arms are just like just knocking out all those fucking things. Freaking amazing. Dude, that scene was cool too, yeah, because he's swinging through the air with the glove, and then it drops, and then Black Panther grabs it, and then, yeah, and then he's all fucking awesome, and just and then Captain Marvel coming back, and then her grabbing it, and then they try to activate, uh, Wasp and Ant-Man try to activate the, I love it, we found, we found another machine, do 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 you know, and then, so, that was fucking awesome, uh, just, god damn, man, so many moments in that fight. Um, even yeah. even in the snap, I don't know if you caught it, but in the background, as the villains were disappearing, mm-hmm. um, they, they you could see Proxima Midnight was holding Corvus, like like consoling him, like on the ground, like oh, holding, and she's like disappearing with him. I thought that was really cool to even show, like to even think of to throw the detail in to show the relationship yeah. between those two characters. Like that was that was pretty awesome. Yeah. That is cool. There was another cool scene too when when they show Star Lord fighting a couple of the guys and then he stands up and he sees Gamora for the first time and he's just like <laughs> oh my God Gamora you're alive you know and then she fucking knees him in the balls you know <laughs> <laughs> he's like you missed the first time but then you got both of them on the second time <laughs> which was awesome and then I loved it because she's like this is the guy you were talking about the Nebula and she's like yeah it was either him or a tree which I just thought was fucking a great line too. Um, which makes me think of a rocket line earlier in the movie when they're in Asgard uh, and he's trying to get Thor to snap out of his funk. He was like, look, you're not the only one that lost people. He goes, I lost my whole family. I lost Quill. I lost Drax. I lost good fucking Rocket or fucking Groot. He goes, and that chick with the antennas, <laughs> which that was awesome. <laughs> he doesn't too. even know her name. Yeah, he goes, that chick with the antennas, which was so, I laughed so fucking hard, dude, because it was just the way he was breaking. I lost Quill. I lost Drax. I lost Groot. And that chick with the antennas. Um, so, yeah, so, so this fight is done, but they did the snap. They accomplished what they needed to, but then we go to the Tony Stark funeral, which is a really cool moment, too. They, once again, throw back to Iron Man 2 with the arc reactor thing. This is Tony Stark has a heart, and it's floating on the river, and you just pan through. That was, like, straight out of a comic book right there, dude. All this, all our heroes, you know, at this funeral pans through, and you just see everybody, man. I mean, everybody. Spider-Man with Aunt May. You know, you see Pitt, uh, Hank Pym with Janet and Hope and, and Paul Rudd and just... It just coaches through everyone, dude. And then there, were, there was a kid standing in the back, and on the first showing, everybody was like, who the fuck was that boy? And right. they kind of zoomed in on, and then it turns out to be the little kid from Iron Man 3, all yeah. fucking grown up, which I'm like, what a crazy callback to fucking throw that kid in that. Seriously. You know? <clears throat> 
You got Maria Hill in the back there. Of course, Captain Marvel watching on the steps, and then Nick Fury walks out to kind of cap it off. And just oh, it was like, oh my god, so cool. They literally had everybody in that fucking scene. Um, and then, yeah, you get that heartfelt moment with John Favreau and the daughter, you know, and he's just like, are you hungry? She's like, yeah, what do you want? Cheeseburger. Oh, your dad loved cheeseburgers, <laughs> which is another throwback to Iron Man 1. Obviously, remember, that was the one thing he wanted when they rescued him out of the cave was the cheeseburger, you know, so they throw back to that and I'll buy you all the cheeseburgers you want, you know, and then once again, kills me. They're doing the, um, when they show Tony talking to them through the hologram and he's like, you know, we're going on this time heist tomorrow. Hopefully everything will be all right. You know, I'll see you in a couple of days. I love you 3000. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> fucking killed me, dude. He looked right at the daughter and he said, I love you 3000 and fucking lost it. Right. Again, so man, sad. you know, so sad, dude. Um, and then, yeah, and then we basically just kind of show where everybody's at. Um, Black Panther's back in Wakanda with his mom and his sister, and Paul Rudd is with uh, Wasp and, and his daughter, who's now 25. <laughs> and, you know, and, uh, you know, and we're just seeing where everybody kind of landed, and, um, you know, and, and we go to um, basically Hulk with Falcon and Bucky and cap and they're like okay you got to put all the stones back you know we'll, we'll see you in a couple seconds when you get back and and i love that he had the hammer with him at that point because i was like okay he's putting it back <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, once again yeah. like we talked about earlier what is he gonna do when he goes to fight and he doesn't have the damn hammer so he took the hammer and the stones okay put him back like we promised and we'll see you back in a couple seconds and of course cap doesn't come back and what happened he doesn't come back and then uh bucky sees somebody off to the side sitting on a bench they go over um, Sam walks over and it's Cap, but he's old now, man. And we're talking, I think I, I saw something in an article that said he's probably like 108 in this fucking scene because when you line up the timeline still, <laughs> he's an old ass motherfucker. Right. Um, but that he probably lived longer because of the the super soldier serum. So, yeah. um, so he's like 107, 108 basically at this point. And he's just like, I went back and I just had to do something for myself, you know, and he just lived his life out. And um, he hands the shield over to Sam and gives him the shield and basically says, try it on. And he's like, I don't know, man. That feels like it belongs to someone else. And he's like, well, it's yours now. It shouldn't, you know, yeah. And, you know, it, it's, it's yours. And he's just like, wow, okay, thanks. And, um, you know, and he's just like, and he sees his wedding ring and he's like, you want to tell me about her? And he's like, nah, no, no, no I, don't. I don't. I don't no, think I don't. that <laughs> Yeah. And then, <laughs> it, and then it rewinds and it goes back to like the 40s and it zooms in on this house and it's good old Cap with Peggy Carter just having that dance finally from First Avenger, man. The dance that he owed her, they're having it, they kiss, and the movie's done. No post credit scene. This is it. This is the wrap-up. This is the culmination of the Infinity Saga. Hell of a fucking movie once again, man. Just really fucking taking you on such an emotional roller coaster. I mean, when you really think about it, there's really not all that much action in this fucking movie until the last fucking 45 minutes. Like, yep. you know, like a lot That's of it is point. just character moments and dialogue and different things interacting between these characters, and it was fantastic. Um, I can't speak highly enough for this movie. Um, I'm just blown away by it every day. I've been thinking about it and just kind of dissecting it in my head and just thinking like, holy shit, like, uh, just this thing, just a plus cinema score, 97% on Rotten Tomatoes. Like I haven't seen a negative thing yet on this film from anybody. Um, but that makes me want to throw it to our pet PV guy over here, Pete, <laughs> nah. who has seen it three times and threw out a little comment the other day that each time he sees it, it gets a little bit worse. And I, I want to dive into that just a little bit to be like, why and what is making you think that? Because I know you loved it the first go around. What What is changing on your next couple of uh, views there? Yeah, dude, I'm dying to figure this out too because when I was with you, when we talked about it afterwards, we were losing our minds over how amazing <laughs> yep. it was and like the emotional roller coaster and all these like epic scenes and the comedy. I, so please enlighten us. Yeah, like you, like like I stated, uh, the, the more I see the movie, the more I guess I kind of I don't know. <laughs> it's probably my fault too because I went with you uh, pretty late and we were up to like what like. 11 11 30 just like talking about the movie next night i go at 10 30 at night and then i go at 7 30 a.m the next morning so 7 <laughs> 30 yeah yeah 
Yeah, I didn't I even know they played it that early. <laughs> that was the yeah. only way it made three hundred and fifty-seven million dollars <laughs> is that they got it so, in a couple extra showings. I think every time I went to see it again, like the first half of that movie, having already experienced it, like now that I'm watching the movie again, it it just it really drags. Um, I, so that that first half again, I know it's important and it, it was great when I saw it the first time, but. I think when I buy it and when I watch that movie, I'm just going to start it uh, right when they do the time jump, and then I'll, then I'll be good from there. Um, I think one of the biggest things, and and I have a bunch of little nitpicky things that Don freaking has already brought up, but um, I think one of the biggest is the whole time jump. Um, if again, you're you're in a room with a bunch of like the most intelligent people on earth, why isn't the first plan? If you guys ha- only can do a limited amount of jumps, why isn't the first plan, let's just go get some more pin particles so we can do this shit, you know, in case we fuck this shit up, we can go, like, try again. I I, I just don't understand that. And the, yes, they figure that out halfway through a jump, but it's, Jesus Christ, man, send Black Widow at some point in time to steal, like, 200 uh, duffel bags worth of pin particles, or... Maybe just talk to him and hey, yeah, shit's bad. Can I borrow some some pin part? Here you go, bro. <laughs> Here's all the pin part. I don't know. That would have been. I just think the whole time jumps could have been held. There's only enough differently. for one round each and two test runs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one, one test, test run. run. <laughs> one test run. <laughs> um, I guess we also forget that Thor has Stormbreaker, which yeah. is a which has fucking... a Bifrost. Which no has a bifrost, <laughs> yeah. so like, why not just go to the past at one point and then just Thor either bifrosts himself or everybody to where they need to fucking go? Bifrost, Boromir, wherever Thoromir, Bifrost, um, <laughs> fucking Star Lord planet. I don't know. It, 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 whatever. The bifrost isn't time travel though. It just fucking no, no, no. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. But you go to a specific time and you can just again. One person can just travel to all those areas within a second. Bloop. Okay, I got the uh, the the soul stone. Bloop. Or not soul mm-hmm. stone. That'll probably be the last one. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I don't know. I, I just feel that could have been done differently. And then also, um, gosh damn it, uh, like like Friggins was saying, um, what they did in the now that they destroyed Thanos and or whatever, Thanos does not exist in that. Um, time anymore, nor does Gamora. So, like, what's going to happen now? Like, I, I guess that's good for them, right? <laughs> There's no snap in that universe. Maybe there is. I don't know. It, it, I I would have liked to see a Deadpool esque scene to see Captain America. Ha- what like him actually placing everything back in the past, and I, I, <laughs> but we don't see that because we would have got that scene at the end. Yeah, of old man. Um, yeah. cap. So I get it. And that's just it. With all my little nitpicks that I have, um, at the end of the day, the movie was fucking fantastic. The fact that every single character, every goddamn character in this movie, like you could tell um, that you know the writer and director and everybody, that there was little nods to their journey and where they are. Like Rocket bringing yeah. up the fact that he you know, lost his family when in his, you know, a couple movies ago, he was like, fuck y'all, fuck my family. I'm just a big ass. You know what I mean? Like I have, I'm still alone. And now he's lost. It makes every really. previous movie have importance. Exactly. Like every yeah, single movie. Sure. It all has, comes full circle for totally. every character. Yep. And which and it, it's how never been like, done before. Right. Mm-hmm. And to think how they originated with just origin stories with the hope that this could all connect into an Avengers movie at one point. But then not only did they connect and do that, but then here we are 10 years later where they actually looped in <laughs> original movie, like the original Avengers. They looped in stuff from the first Iron Man. They looped in stuff from Star Guardians of the Galaxy. Like they tied all the little pieces together yeah. and gave us these like moments of reliving those those sections to help us hit that nostalgia factor of like when we first. Oh, I remember watching that way 10 years ago. You know and well, even, Cap- even 
even uh, Captain Marvel with like at the beginning when she's there and they're running through the slideshows of all the people that got dusted and it shows Fury oh, right, right, right. and yeah. it pans to her face and she's like all fucking sad because he's gone. Like, yeah. you know, like things like just little, little moments like yeah. that, that just make it just like, you're like, if you've seen Captain Marvel, you're like, I know why she feels that way. You know, like, so yep. like you get it, you know, and you understand. And, you know, like if you hadn't seen Dr. Strange, you wouldn't get as much of a kick out of seeing the ancient one again. And just like all these different things that just bring it all together. It's just, I mean, what a piece of art. It just really truly is the way that it, it is. It all and together. E- even, even, um, freaking Scott, like his whole, yeah reason for doing what he was doing in the first movie was so he can be with his daughter right. now he literally has the chance to just be with his daughter but he is he's beyond that now he is now a better person that fights for other people and and is not so selfish anymore and and again he could have just lived on the rest of his life with his daughter without a baby mama yeah. and without that douchey guy and he would have been he <laughs> should have been happy technically but like he is way beyond that. He is a hero now. And yeah. that's this movie is all about heroes. And, and God, like, you know, it's how much it hurt to see some of them go to see, like, again, like, you know, they say Captain America is the first Avenger, but we all know who the first real Avenger is. You know what I mean? So <laughs> fucking Iron Man, man, to see him go, Robert Downey Jr. is just everything he's he's done for or everything that he's brought to this franchise. And every time we see him in a, a new movie, whether he's cameoing in Spider-Man or if he's just being quippy in, in the Avengers, he just brings so fucking much to this franchise and to these movies. And now that he's gone, you know, like you think, where can they go from here? But they've built so much that we are now good without him. Yeah. And yeah. just such, like you said, unprecedented, so well done. And this is just... I was trying to explain this, um, th- what this movie actually means to me to somebody else, that somebody that's never yeah. seen any of the movies. And I just, th- what, yeah. how I was going off on it, it, it was almost as if like this was like a person I was talking about. Just, <laughs> yeah. I was, like, like this person, this, like these movies are more important than my dad. I don't know. <laughs> I well, it is, man. I mean, when you look back. Anything else. Yeah. I mean, when you, when you, when we look back, like when we're super old and we're like the movie of our generation, like this is going to be a movie that like stands out, like fucking like, have you seen Endgame? <laughs> like, you know, like, it's just like, you know, like, uh, did you watch the Infinity Saga? Like, that's what I grew up on. Like, you know, like it's just, that's going to be something that I think is just going to stand the test of time. I mean, like I said in the beginning of the show, it's, it, it's an epic, man. It's three hours. It is an epic masterpiece of a culmination of 22 interconnecting films that it just, it's just never been done before. You know, the closest thing ever is like fucking James. Star Wars. Not even that. I mean, that's not even, you know, barely eight movies, you know, but But, I guess that they're connected, but but I'm just saying like like James Bond, but yes, but like they had to keep recasting and they're not really connected and they're different from movie to movie. Whereas, this is all telling one big over, you know, overreaching arc, and it's yeah. it's just mind blowing the way they did it, you know. And and they tr- and others have tried to copy it, and they <laughs> and they just haven't been able to. They just yeah. I don't know. Mar- they, Marvel had ha- Kevin hit Feige. The formula. Yeah, he's the, ma- he, he's the magic uh, the, yeah. the, the, the magic master, thing on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing. It's just great. We need now, to go to part... cast and get a bunch of Kevin Feige so that we, <laughs> yeah, do, we never exactly. run out of a Kevin Duplicate Feige. We can't run out of Kevin Feige. If he dies, we're screwed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God. For sure. You know? Uh, but real quick, one, one big scene, too, at the end of the movie that we kind of glossed over is just what happens next with Thor, right? So we said everybody's kind of going off doing their own <laughs> things. And so we go back to New Asgard, and Valkyrie's like, what are we going to do? And he's like, you know what? I don't want to be king. This is your thing. Like, like they need a leader that's going to lead them the right way, and it's you. So she's like, I'm going to make some changes around here. And like, I bet you will, so go ahead and do it. And so he turns over New Asgard to Valkyrie, and then she's like, what are you going to do? And he's like, you know, for the first time ever, I don't really have a path. I'm just going to go see where it takes me. And the camera pans over, and Rocket's waiting for him with the, with the ship. And he's like, come on, let's go. And he gets on the ship, and he's like, all right, the Asgardians of the galaxy is here. We're ready to go. And, uh... Um, and there's another great moment with Thor and Star-Lord um, that we get, like how we had that awesome moment in Infinity War uh, <laughs> where, you know, Star-Lord is looking at a map. He's trying to find Gamora, you know, and because remember, so Gamora, we saw her at the end battle there, but then she takes off. She vanishes and we don't know where the hell she's at. So 
Um, we got to go find her, and that's probably a big key point of Guardians of the Galaxy Three. So, so they're looking, they're searching for her, and he's looking at the map, and then Thor slides the map over, like where are we gonna go? And then he's like, we need to go to over here, and they start arguing about who's in charge. And I love that, you know, they're like, uh, you guys should fight. <laughs> and yeah. Then, you know, and then, yeah. And, then, and Mantis is like, ooh, yeah, they should do knives. I think knives would be great. And and then, oh yeah, was it Drax that suggested it? I think Drax is like they should fight yeah. <laughs> for, for, yep. for who, who's going to lead and um, they're like no one's going to fight we all know who's the leader here <laughs> it's like, me right yeah, yeah. yeah it's me right yeah oh yeah yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So good, dude. Awesome. I hope to God if Thor is not in Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> 3, I'm going to be so fucking pissed off. Right? Me too. And I really hope, like, I'm struggling. Like, I don't know if I want him to call it Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 or as Guardians of the Galaxy. That would be even better. Oh, man. I don't know. I, I, I think it would be Volume 3, but man. They, that is going to be the biggest missed opportunity if somehow they just gloss over that like he's not there anymore. He's, oh, they, sure. That has to have been set up because I know that script was already pretty much written, and I hope that they had already figured that out and said, hey, let's put him. Because I read an article actually earlier today that Chris Hemsworth did renew his deal with Marvel, so like, so he's he's got a couple more films left, and I, this is a perfect way to do it. Like, I think like we're done with those original people doing solo movies, and I think now it's just at a point where you use them in oh, Team other movies, characters yeah. yeah you do the team up movies and have fun with it so that is awesome so just man once again what an incre- incredible movie i want to just run through real quick just this box office stuff man because it's mind-blowing to me so thursday night it came out in that preview night that's when you guys went and saw it that first time 60 million dollars is the most that any movie has ever made on a preview night the previous record was actually 57 which was uh star wars the force awakens um Largest Friday opening day money. It made $156.7 million just it's on Friday. Insane. Dude, movies wish they could make that in their lifetime, and they did that in one fucking day. And the previous record was 119, which was Star Wars The Force Awakens. So that's a big difference, man, 119 to 156. Then Saturday, it had the biggest Saturday ever with 109. The previous record was 82, with which was Infinity War. Then Sunday, it made 84.3, which the previous record was 69 for Infinity War. And then opening weekend, it made 357, which the previous record, like we said earlier, was 257 from Infinity War. So a $100 million difference. Um, Literally 90% of the market share in theaters over the weekend. Um, Yeah, I mean, just incredible, man. Uh, fastest record to 100 million, fastest record to 150, fastest record to 200, to 250, to 300, to 350, <laughs> literally all those records, fastest six-day record, uh, biggest worldwide opening with 1.2 billion, the previous record was 640 for Infinity War, so that is a big-ass difference, uh, biggest 3D record opening ever, 540 million just in 3D format, which the previous oh. record was 366 for Infinity War, and the biggest IMAX opening ever with 91 million just in IMAX, breaking the previous record of 47 for Star Wars: The Force Awakens. That's so a big difference. It's insane. It broke every fucking record possible. Like I said, as of this morning, it's already the eighth biggest movie of all time, and it hasn't even been out a week yet. <laughs> like that is just insane wow. to wrap your head around uh it has to catch two i think so infinity war made two billion and then there's titanic at like 2.2 and then avatar at like 2.7 so we'll see where this taps out uh, it's going to be very interesting to see uh, how long it can ride uh the charts here but Man, once again, I can't speak highly enough for it. Now, I've had people ask me, can I just go watch this movie if I haven't seen the others? Yes, you can, but you're not going to get the emotional attachment like we're talking about, and you're not going to really catch a lot of the cameos and the quips and the different connections if you haven't seen all the movies. I know it's a lot to go through if you're somebody that hasn't really seen nothing <laughs> but maybe one or two of these, but it'd be worth the time <laughs> to invest to uh, to do it the right way.
way if possible if anything you need to at least watch infinity war first um yeah, but man sure. you you will get way way more out of it this is definitely a fan service movie that that pays you off for being somebody that's been connected for since 2008 and watched every single one of these films for sure they kept you in mind big time on this so uh final thoughts my friends Fred, what's your final thoughts on Endgame? Well, I mean, we've covered a lot, and I, you know, keep saying the same kind of words over and over as we talk about this to say, "Awesome, cool, it's amazing," you know, and and really, it's all of those things. I, I found, uh, you know, people have asked me what I thought about it after seeing it, and I just keep saying the kind of the same thing: it's everything I wanted and then some. Um, this is one of those rare occasions where a movie. Um, just it has so much to give for for the audience and just like what you said um it it was that payoff it's it's kind of like almost like a thank you to us in a way for saying like we appreciate you guys sticking around for this so we're going to make this right and make it epic and give you you know the callbacks to the old stuff giving you a bunch of new stuff and just seeing all these characters intertwine finally for something we've never imagined would ever happen ever um, I loved the comedy aspects. I loved um, the action sequences. But more than anything else, I loved the character moments um, and the emotions that it gave us. Um, you know, I talked about Hawkeye really standing out for me. I I'm a big fan of like the kind of Punisher type characters. So seeing him go Ronin and flash people up and go just nuts uh, that that is exactly what I was hoping to see. And then at the same time, though, seeing the humanity of everyone else and everyone battling to save the world, um, seeing Cap stay true to, to true to form. Like the whole time, Cap has never kind of changed or sacrificed what he feels is right. And I love the fact that, you know, he carried that all the way to the end. I also just absolutely adore the way they wrapped everything up. They give Cap his happy ending. Um, and I, I, there's just not enough good things I can say uh, about this film. And one, one last thing I'll close on, cause I know everyone else got to say something, but like, I absolutely just really, really enjoyed, um, the trip down memory lane of the old movies, like going to the original Avengers, going to Thor, uh, dark world, but specifically going to Morad with, um, with star Lord dancing around. And, you know, you talked about like, the scene where he's like dancing around, there's like, we don't hear what's in the headphones. So you just hear him. It's all quiet. And he's just singing to himself. And there was a really funny moment where my girlfriend like leaned over and she goes, that's how you sound when you're dancing around in your star Lord outfit. And I just busted out. laughing. And I was like, Oh man, I'm an idiot too. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was great. And, um, you know, and, and that was just, that's what I didn't expect to have that, like to get such a big smile on my face for going back in time and visiting all these, these moments that we've loved um, for so long. And, you know, it just, it, it just brought complete joy to me watching it and had an absolute blast. So um, I'll stop with that. And yeah, that's my final thoughts. Oh yeah. Beeps. What you got? Ooh, uh, I mean, so unlike friggin's, but also like friggins, um, yeah, as these guys said, stated, I mean, I absolutely love this movie. Um, yes, Peeps is known to be a little bit more nitpicky than he has to be. Um, but um, just overall, I, you know, friggins got everything he was he wanted in this movie and more. I feel like, you know, the, the, maybe a steak analogy. I feel like I ordered a. Uh, a medium rare steak, and I end up getting one. I end up getting it well done. So oh, that's better. Go, so okay. So that's kind of that's kind of the <laughs> point that I'm making. Like, yes, it didn't give me all the things I wanted, and I still think in the back of my head, oh, missed opportunity, or it could have been better. But you know, maybe not. Like, maybe if they would have added some of the things that I would have liked to see, it, it wouldn't have been as good. So I'm still stuck in my head a little bit with some like elements I would have liked to see in it. I would have liked to see maybe a little bit, uh, like, maybe a nod towards mutants. I would have liked to see a, a, a little hint or maybe some, uh, some unanswered questions for where they could potentially go in the future where they, they are there. They're very subtle. Um, 
but you know, they did give us a little bit. I guess I just kind of wanted a little bit more. And even though, again, I wanted an end credit scene, I am completely happy with them not giving us one. They did exactly what is deserved in this franchise, and they closed a book. And if, you know, as we know, they will continue. I'm pretty sure this company likes money, so we will be seeing a <laughs> lot more of these movies. But they, it was so fantastically, um, you know, put together. Um, Friggins likes the fact that Star Lord is now unconscious, and uh, <laughs> um, Korath is now going to wa- step over his knocked out body and get the the stone. You know, Friggins likes that in that in that world. I, I kind of think that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> and, Cat so, put it back. Cat put it back. Okay, yes, you're right. The stone is back, but he still has a dent in the back of his forehead <laughs> from freaking War Machine. So, um, again, whatever. Again, uh, they everything was just so well done. And as I stated before, it's just the 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 amount of you know thank you as as it really feels like that they had given the audience. I mean, how many uh, movies have we seen as of lately? Um, Venom. Uh, some uh, movies from another company that I don't feel like bashing right now have, you know, they put a movie together, but it's, you know, it's not, there's not many nods to the fans. Like there are some, but then there's other things that don't really make sense. And then all together, it's just like this, just pretty annoying, but this, it gives everything the fans could put potentially want and everything people that have, as Don, as Don stated, you don't have to see it, but to actually get the feels that we were feeling, I highly recommend, you know, you watch every movie before, um, you know, up to this point. Like, people that haven't seen this movie, I I am going to probably set up some sort of a, <laughs> you know, movie watching fest for them to, to, to be able to go through each one to, 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 to so that, again... To get those feels, I don't know. It, it's it's like no other. To be laughing one minute and crying the next minute. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Why is this movie doing this to me? And like Don said before, it's a work of art. It is truly, truly a work of art. So, it, props and, and and mucho thanks to everybody that put this together. I, I this is just it's it's, it's so good. It, it was just absolutely amazing. So, agreed, agreed. Uh, can't agree enough. Uh, just an, an amazing, amazing rollout. Where do we go from here? Who knows? I agree. Like at first, I was kind of perturbed that there was no after credit scene, uh, but then I understood. Like you said, I mean, when you take a step back and you're like, look, they just they closed the book. They closed this chapter, this Infinity Saga, which is now dubbed these 22 films, is done. Like it's over. So there's nothing to tease as much as. I really hope they were going to throw in some mutant stinger or yeah. we're going to see Galactus yep, yep. on his way, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or something that they would have just threw in at the last moment to be like, look what's coming. Yeah. Uh, they, they didn't. And, and, and it's probably for the better. Um, this, this saga is done. We, like you said, we know they're going to move on. We know we're going to get black Panther too. We know we're going to get Dr. Strange too. Uh, we're probably going to get Ant-Man three. We're going to get guardians of the galaxy three. We're also going to get black, widow we're gonna get the eternals uh we're gonna get shang chi like we're there's a lot of things in motion and in works right now plus of course the disney plus streaming services um that service starts in november and we're gonna have the wanda and vision show we're gonna have uh the hawkeye show we're gonna have a loki show we're gonna have falcon and winter soldier which i'm wondering how that show is gonna play out now because is he gonna be cap in it who knows yeah. you know like yeah. did they just call it that to get through the end game from motion and then be like psych the show is <laughs> now time cap and the winter soldier <laughs> you know like <laughs> um you know who knows man but there's so much that's still coming down the pipeline uh marvel is just kicking up stuff left and right obviously like peep said they love to make money this is obviously the biggest money maker in the world right now and you're not going to slow down so Uh, We'll see where it takes us, man. I hope we get another Avengers movie in a couple years and we just kind of have the newer crew kind of come together. Um, You know, it's good to know that Thor's still out there. Hulk is still out there. I mean, we could still have people come back. Mm -hmm. Uh, I always felt like these guys, as much as they tried to make it seem like this is the end of the road for the original six, I feel like 
if they did another Avengers movie in four years, I mean, this is a, it's a great time to dust everybody off and bring everybody back, sure. um, and do something, you know, but now we have so much potential with the, with the Fox buyout to bring in Deadpool and to bring in the X-Men and bring in the Fantastic Four. And there's so much we can do in the future here. So we're in good hands with Kevin Feige, like we said, and Kevin Feige, we trust, we trust. Uh, yep. <laughs> and, um, it's going to be awesome. So, uh, we'll wrap it up there, man. Thank you, everybody, for listening to this massive jam-packed, almost as long as Endgame review <laughs> of Endgame. So, but you know, it's always fun to take it in and, and break it down. It's nice to finally be able to talk about it because uh, it's been such a secretive movie. It's like there's so many memes and shit I want to share, but then you're like still worried, like I don't want to spoil nothing for nobody. Uh, so you're like you hold back on what you send and what you post on social media. Um, but you know what? It, you know, like I said, man, go see it again. If you're just one of those weird people that love to hear spoiler reviews and you haven't seen the movie yet, I hope that you want to go see it after hearing us gloat about it for two hours. Um, you know, you definitely go have fun with it. Enjoy it. See it as many times as you can. See it in the biggest screen possible that you can. This movie was shot with IMAX cameras. It's made for the IMAX format. And I, you need to see it on the biggest screen possible because it is deserving of that uh, for sure. So... Uh, I want to thank my guests as always, Friggins and Peeps. Follow them on Twitter at Friggins and at For My Peoples. And uh, of course, you can always follow me on Twitter at DX Don Mega. And of course, follow the show at Am I on the Air. Uh, thank you for listening to this Am I Still on the Air Avengers Endgame spoiler review. I hope you've enjoyed it. And of course, check out the website, Am I on the Air.com. Check out everything we got going on over there. Uh, you can always find us on iTunes, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, uh, the whole nine on iTunes. We're all over the place. So, uh, thanks everybody. Go watch the movie again. Help it make three billion dollars and become <laughs> the biggest movie of all time. That would be pretty awesome. So uh, we'll catch you on the next one, y'all. Peace. Red dragons. Red dragons.